The that thing that she said. Laugh. Yeah, that was a great thing to laugh about. Did we, we, this is it. This is it. Okay. This is the show. <laughs> Happy Monday, everybody. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. You know what? A Twitter thumbnail is relevant this yeah. weekend. Oh, yeah. To once the Flat Out Fever <laughs> podcast. <laughs> once so once in a year. Once in a year. It's relevant. <laughs> once a year. <laughs> Bernie's hey. whispering in Putin's ear. Flat of fever, episode fifty-eight. You'll notice he was wearing a red tie this this year. Whom? Putin. Whoa. Vladimir. Uh, President Vladimir. Vlad. Yeah. Uh, you know, on a first all name. power to him. First name. Praise be unto him. Vlad. <laughs> yeah, for, for, shout out, shout out to Vlad. For, to Vlad for showing up, making it to the Russian Grand Prix. Hey, this is the for, the the flat of fever Formula One podcast or something. Yes. Hey guys, welcome. Thanks everyone that came to the Russian Grand Prix to, at Betty's. Yeah, we do these That's things. If, if you're if you're anywhere near Toronto, we do these things uh, every race weekend. This year we're starting to experiment. Bad weather uh, and all. Yeah, like rain, rain and everything. Yeah, this is how we give back to the community. Yeah, this is really not us. just our self-serving opinions <laughs> about Formula One and the state that it's currently in, <laughs> but this is how we give back. Honestly, that was a lot of fun. I think I think uh, I was actually pleasantly surprised with the amount of people that did show up uh despite the weather despite any everything else yeah, it was so, cool sorry for people that are hearing about this now and wish they did come because we forgot <laughs> we forgot and we posted it on saturday yeah we, we, online, we, we didn't do our duest of diligences torontonians though come out every race yeah. we're telling you now every we, every aside from canada because we're gonna be in Montreal, but no, it, the, no, the Grand Prix, but the, the showing is still the gonna show happen. will happen, but we won't be there. Yeah, Wait, true. what? Really? Yeah. R- really? Yeah, we got that lined up already. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Up, Who's up. gonna organize this? Yeah. But buddy, if, buddy from the that shows up every week, or we will show up every week. Fuck off. Anyways, yeah. King East, King East, King and Spadina, come. No, no, King no. and Sherborne. King, King and Sherborne. Sorry, yeah. King, King Sherborne. King East, come, uh, come hang out. Yeah. At Betty's upstairs. Yeah. Just walk upstairs. We'll be there. Yeah. In, and it's re- it's called the downstairs. It's actually no, it's upstairs. The basement. It's, it's a basement, basement downstairs. Basement. All right. Okay. Is that what that is? Yeah, that's what that is. Oh. That's a Betty's it's basement. It's called the basement. Yeah. At Betty's. <laughs> I've been fooled for so long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it, it, great, great time. We showed the race. We showed the um the a bit of the pre-show. Nice. Uh, but the, Ted's notebook. Yeah. No, actually, not this time around. Right. Half price. The last time was so embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> half price wings. Half price nachos. Everybody has a good time. Do show up. And one of the things that I remember <laughs> uh, from that. Uh, you gotta watch out though because nacho toppings are yeah. not half price. Oh, yeah, apparently nacho toppings. Apparently. Apparently. Unless the, you, like you gotta confirm toppings. this before you order. Yeah. Oh, premium toppings. <laughs> and, they always get you those. Bastards. So, so Mark, and so hey, delicious. Sh- so delicious. Shout out to Mark. Yo, Mark. Hey, Mark. Um, Mark was there yesterday and he said, he said, he said that apparently. Uh, Kavia had said before the race that he was going to show Vettel no mercy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Remember Vettel yelled at him after the race last time? Yeah. yeah. What are you doing, up man? that whole first corner. Yeah. Yeah. So, what, what, what is this? This is Formula One. Oh, 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 that's what he's yelling about. Yeah. If it happens trying again, to, trying to one be a of boss. them is going to be dead. I don't know who it is, but... Well, already uh, Mauricio Rivervene, uh, Rivervene was... Uh, uh, Ted asked him like, "Hey, what, what what do you think about that?" He's like, "Hey, you, you do you know you do it once, uh, you, you know we can say this is a racing incident. You do it twice, but now twice in the same race, like and after that, this is not acceptable." I, I really don't like that Kvyat yeah, guy. It's no, a, he's got a, he's a bad attitude. Yeah, yeah, he's got a bad attitude. Yeah. Is, uh, just, How long has he been in Formula One? Sort of three years. Oh. Th- yeah, I think it's third year now. Yeah, started with Toro Rosso. Yeah, then. Moved to uh, Red Bull. Team Danny. Yeah. <laughs> After Vettel left. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Most. Yeah. Uh, three, I think. But, what, he he was, just got a bad attitude, man. He's like, the, Vettel, like most people from last time, you get yelled at by Vettel. After you crash him out and whatever, like ruined his race. Yeah. You'd be like, oh, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I don't know what to say. Like, yeah. it was an accident. But he's just like. <laughs> yeah, for anyone that's he listening right now, just, he just had like a, a, a stone face, took a sip of his water. He's like, dude, just stop yelling, man. <laughs> he just <laughs> ignored stop him. Yelling. And it, yeah, it seemed kind of awkward. Like, man, and now he was, I'm pretty sure he did that on purpose. 
<laughs> Listen, that last week he got so he he, he kind of got he, he was on a high because he made it to the podium yeah. and he got driver of the race, right? Even though I mean that could have just been like like who knows what those votes are cuz cuz clearly if they if if for uh FOM was actually counting the the proper votes the first time around like Harry yeah, cheated in, in in Australia. It doesn't so, matter if the internet goes uh well let, let's just vote up harry anto that'll be pretty funny yeah but he he could have deserved it anyways he was a brand new driver he finished the race in a new car he's never raced before like I fucking he did it yeah. harry anto should have got that he he got the most votes but now yeah did, so, his whole country is behind him how do you know he, that wasn't legit I'm, exactly yeah they kind of said they, a lot came from the same ip or something like that uh, who knows yeah. <laughs> is somebody just hitting refresh on their browser three thousand times <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing that they need to put out i think is the numbers though oh they, they will and, unless, never do unless that. they're disappointing yeah, here that's the thing what do you they, think? W- they will never do that because you think, like, the numbers K- are, are disappointed uh disappointing or just who, who like it doesn't fit the narrative whoever they won like or whoever keeps winning i guess it looks so like k mag got driver of the of the day for this race uh-huh. what do you think he got like 300 votes or something he won with that <laughs> how many do you think it was or I, was it like thirty thousand? it would have been thousands but i don't i don't, I don't know it's, it's 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 hard to say yeah i want to know <laughs> i want to know i th- like there's Just, there's even other websites i want to know but like based on it's a russian grand prix right somebody right. more like russian's gonna win it more Russian. I don't know. You know. I don't know. It could. Be, yeah, you but go to the British Grand not, Prix. Lewis yeah. Lewis might not finish and win, but you know, did he get it or did he not? Did they change the <laughs> numbers? Come on. Yeah. Um. But 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 think about that. Like so, Kvyat had had been coming from a high, a yeah. little bit of a high from from the from the previous race. You know, into his home Grand Prix. A bit he of had an won. ego and attitude high too. Yeah. Though. He had won the driver of the day he got yeah. he got into the podium mm-hmm. maybe he thought for a brief second there that he was a big deal <laughs> and then the race came and that accident just from then on i mean i think i think i was and and a lot of people were kind of disappointed because we wanted to see vettel fighting with hamilton both of them going up mm. the field that would have been really good that's what ecclestone said that on the grid walk didn't he he's yeah like, oh, he's like my two boys uh vettel and, and uh and Lewis, they're gonna get to show everybody if my plan works of uh, the reverse grids. <laughs> yeah, boom, <laughs> he crashed out in the first corner. That's it. But yeah, that's what I said before the race too. That's what I wanted to see, man. Those two guys fight it out to the front. Everybody wanted to see that. That w- that was the the expectation. Uh, that's mm-hmm. that that's what we like. We, I went into that Grand Prix thinking this could be another great race simply because of that. That's why we got all those f bombs. Yeah. Oh man, that was just great. <laughs> I said yesterday, Vettel is officially fluent in English. Yeah. He's, he's not shy about it, any of his languages anymore that he can speak. <laughs> Remember when he first, like last year, he started out, like his celebrations and stuff. He started out using a bit of Italian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure he's get he's probably he's not there yet, right? But like I'm, he's, I think, he's not at this I, swearing in Italian. Level. Yeah, swearing in Italian and all. I don't I speak a lot like, of other languages, but I feel like English just has like the one of the best ways to swear, and it just feels so good when, <laughs> as soon as you say it. Especially like especially like Western English, like Canada and America, were just like you fucking piece of shit. Like just yeah. you get real fucking get, uh, uh, land on it, right? Yeah, those words have been perfected, yeah. honed, and stolen from <laughs> other places. They even have like I mean, I mean it's, just, it's there's something harsh about it. Yeah, right. Yeah, because <laughs> like crap and shit mean the same thing, right? But saying shit just has so much more power to uh, it. Yeah, yeah, and crap is more like, you know, funny. You can put a funny twist in that. Yeah, ah, crap. Crap. Or, shit. Shit in German is pretty good, though. Scheiße. It's Scheiße. It's the same field. Scheiße. <laughs> it's, it's the same field. Um, <laughs> That's a good crash, though, if that tells uh, cursing. And Dri- driving off, that was the, dr- drove off on the scooter. <laughs> that, 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 that. The, the the person with like the beat button like must have been like dee, 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 oh you he, he was on point <laughs> like like he making like point. Ba- basically like trying to like like would be like Morse code something you know yeah. beep 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 <laughs> brilliant that was good yeah good job good good and, and and really be the thing that after that and because everything like it it, it really um brought to the attention that 
radio these days is kind of quiet. A lot of people have been saying, like, hey, yeah. bring back all the radio. Like, yeah. we need to hear more of this shit all the time. <laughs> now, in terms of uh, how much the uh, the pit can talk to the driver or, like, how much the audience can uh, hear with those well, conversations. Yeah, I think uh, they go hand in hand because there was just so many more rad- radio transmissions before right. that the ones that were, like, either funny or noteworthy for, for some reason – got got played to the um to the audience right like they, right. they actually like got played on the world feed or whatever now that still happens but the fact that there's just less overall radio communication going back and forth that means that that crop of like the actual useful ones or like the funny bits or whatever right, right. the tv worthy bits are that much less just yeah that many less, less yeah. Oh, that sucks yeah, a couple of people at on the at the at betty's were talking about that this weekend it's starting to get noticeable like how despite like four races in how many fewer there are yeah like right right team radios and like quotes and stuff like that something i saw at the start of the season when um i think this was just in a reddit thread that some people were throwing out ideas but a cool idea I, I, i can't give credit but when the cars get within drs range like if you're within one second of the guy in front or behind then a channel opens up that you can talk to that driver. <laughs> that would be good. You know what I mean? Wow. So, so say like you and, I, you and I are racing. You're in the car ahead of yeah. me. I'm, I get behind you and I pull up in, in DRS range. You'd be like, hey, Mike, watch this, bitch. And then, <laughs> yeah. Watch this, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I come through DRS zone and I start going past you. Like We can we, we can talk while we're within a second of each other. And then oh, maybe, maybe you, just, you can just have two buttons for, you know, talk to the car ahead, talk to the car behind. If you're within a second of both. Now, see, like that, while I then, would want that, that in the very <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. But that would also, I would think, uh, sort of take away from, like, the sport of it and more bringing it to light of entertainment. Oh, true. Right? Which so, would be cool to see anyway, whatever right, sport yeah, is entertaining. Okay. Right. Okay, okay, sure. <laughs> you know why they don't mic uh, NHL players? Why? Because they swear all the fucking this time. Cares too much. Yeah, they just make like, too many curses. Hey, you fucking piece of shit! Like I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna get you. That's why they don't mic them ever. And if they do, they're like they're 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 very polite. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, well, but imagine, why not? Imagine, that, imagine, that actually would be brilliant. Imagine just... Kvyat and Vettel. Like J- Vettel's yeah. radio message alone was was wicked. Imagine yeah. the two of them radioing. Yeah, right. you, but... Vettel would have sat in the car for an extra lap until Kvyat passed within a second of him again, so he could <laughs> give him an extra message. Him. Throw up that throw up that fight poster. That it's amazing. It's a, it's, a, it's such a combo. Yeah, imagine the two of them yelling at each other, and, and that, especially if Kvyat really did say that he was going to show Vettel no mercy, no mercy on the second second bump. <laughs> if he was really as pissed as he seems like he might have been, yeah, he'd be like, oh, fuck you, buddy, boom, <laughs> ramming from behind. That would have been, I think, an, an even better idea. It's on the uh, the the page. I was on the show. The, the UF one, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, you gotta highlight these things. Yeah, yeah sorry. Um, it's. There you go. I, I think a better idea would be like what, what you were. <laughs> yeah. There you go. It's like UFC, but it's a UF one <laughs> coming soon to pay per view. Vettel versus Kvyat. Somebody put in the comments their heights re- <laughs> regen weight. <laughs> no, imagine the, the two of these guys the yelling at each other on the radio, being in a second. Oh no, this, this is, is not. Stopping. This is sorry. not the one. Yeah, no. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Seriously though, who would win a fight, Vettel? Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't Russia. know, man. Yeah. Do you, like we're talking about like they're the exact same size as as people, same height, same same weight. I'm gonna say Vettel know. just because he's older. Maybe the but, experience. But Buddy is Russian, so he's Russian. He's got no kids. He's younger. He's got the stone face. Oh yeah, no. Yeah. He's looking just to fuck someone up for fucking up sake yeah. yeah i think he did that on purpose <laughs> <laughs> oh man freaking kavia he's gonna need some talking to and obviously i mean <laughs> there's there was this other thing and it's, it's it's in the book too um it that uh that, that somebody pointed out on um on the reddit and it's that uh verstappen actually <laughs> went and he liked this 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 tweet <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it's like it's a bit further down uh like it says uh verstappen while you're finding that uh, uh, no, the, oh, yeah there it is because <laughs> yeah cause somebody pointed this out okay so this is just uh a tag hoya ad with verse uh it's with, like a uh, bus Kvyat. stop poster or something yeah and then it says don't crack under pressure 
and then some journalist or something or somebody said, "Oh, that's ironic," because <laughs> he did. <laughs> but then go like scroll up and you see, like, but Max Verstappen. <laughs> 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 and and this is what a lot of people are saying that listen if if Kvyat is out the the logical step would be that Max Verstappen would be moving into that Red Bull seat mm. and he could be as early as 2017 yeah yeah, yeah if this guy doesn't clean up his attitude <laughs> <laughs> something else related Qu- quickly before we move off this it's it's interesting like so say these two guys fought yeah. or like we were just talking about like if the drivers could the two drivers that are fighting, like one's trying to pass the other or vice versa, you're trying to pass the other guy. If you could talk in MMA, in the the unified rules, it's actually illegal to, you can get a, a point deduction, like basically a penalty for talking in, in the cage or in the ring, like when you're fighting. Wow. But a lot of times they allow it, but just, <laughs> just interesting for these guys fighting and talking. It's actually illegal in, in a fist fight, like a sanctioned fist fight to talk to each other. But anyways, re- also related Jeez. to this, Danny Daniel Ricardo, who was all, he also got caught up in that accident. Yes, he got taken he out. kind of ruined his race. Yeah, yeah he, he got taken out. He's didn't make it to the points even. He said during the race, well, okay, after the race, so he demanded he demanded an apology from Kvyat <laughs> for causing that shit. He demanded an apology, and uh, he said during the race, his team told him that Vettel actually caused the accident. Just to so not get him just, riled up. Just so he wouldn't get too pissed off. He's oh like, my god! That yeah. his fucking yeah. Another another Red Bull car took him out. They they told him that it was Vettel's fault. His old teammate, who he you know they yeah, they yeah. fought each other. <laughs> so he told me your old teammate took you out. But remember we saw during and then after the incident when Vettel took that uh, Marshall scooter. He's like, you get on the back. That was one of the, that was one of the funniest things I've yeah. seen. Like he, like he took the Marshall scooter, drove back to the paddock. Yeah. Went straight to the Red Bull garage and started yelling at Christian Horner. <laughs> I saw that. Now, okay, so the whole incident was <laughs> apparently like what what he, what he told um, uh, Christian Horner was basically like, if you give that guy a job in 2017, you're an idiot. Like basically, he was like, yeah, if you hire wow. this guy again, like wow. you're you're stupid. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a dumb dumb. Yeah. I don't yeah. care if we're in Russia. <laughs> So, okay, what, was there any penalty to Kvyat? Like, was this actually technically his fault that they... Yeah, but, but see, if, if you cause an accident that you get involved in it too and it and it affects you negatively enough, yeah. then there's no need for an additional penalty, right? Like, you already, like, you caused right. your own penalty. Right. You fucked yourself. <clears throat> yeah. But the, did they actually acknowledge that? Like, did anyone come out from the FIA or FOM that, I, to, to be like, well, okay, um, this guy there was clearly a, fucked up twice. There was, there was another, like, because we, we, if, if you watch the race, at the bottom when there's uh, something from the stewards or something, or like an incident that's being investigated, they typically tell you, like, incident at turn whatever involving this and this driver is getting investigated. And for that, for that incident, the thing is that so much shit happened. Right. During, it's really that first hard turn. to point it No, the message below the screen said, incidents. Incidents. Yeah, yes. incidents that turn to will be investigated. Oh, my God. But I guess nothing came out of that. Not not, not okay. specifically for Kavia V. Vettel. Yeah. V. Vettel. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll basically, typically just try to decide as quickly as they can. Like, look at the replays while the race is happening. Right. And if they think... It was somebody's fault or someone got an advantage they might give him a penalty sometimes if it's too tricky and like and they need like some actual time to sit down and deliberate yeah they will like say you know what we're looking at this after the race okay and and, and you know penalties or whatever could be could be decided then which which has happened like sometimes like yeah some some something happens during the race and then the stewards will actually make a decision after that knocks like some people down like in in terms of points and whatever yeah this, mm-hmm. is, this is something that could happen but it, it didn't happen this time Kvyat oh, okay. Kvyat's car didn't make it into the points none of the rebels made it into the points wow. the damage damage was already done like it's it was enough uh, they 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 had they had that coming to them um it, it is it's pretty um it, it, there's there's again on the uh, on on the book here let me let me find the for you. That, that picture there shows Vettel, the back of Vettel's car is in the air like it's off the ground oh yeah totally His tires off the ground there yeah crazy when he like he see rammed him man like he was like he went right in yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was it was on purpose 
fully on purpose. Yeah, it was pretty insane. And then, the, yeah, there, there's a Russian fan uh, the, that they showed there for a little bit that was holding a flag. I guess this was like when the beef, uh, I, actually this was during FP one. Uh, the the camera zoomed in on a fan, on a on a Kvyat fan holding a flag that said torpedo, torpedo, torpedo Kvyat number twenty six or whatever his his number is, oh, yeah, and that was. <laughs> <laughs> True. That, yeah, look at that. Torpedo Kvyat, 26. Little did he know that he, <laughs> that he, did, he did. He pulled a torpedo on Patel. He was, he was zooming right in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but Vettel, what a good guy. Like, picking up his, you know, the debris, he tried to, like, somehow fit the front wing of the Ferrari somehow back in the cockpit. <laughs> We're going to <laughs> it up, wrestle it out from between the walls. Yeah. The <laughs> um, at Hamilton, while all this was happening, he, he he actually had a pretty good race. Not It wasn't nothing too fantastic, but even from pretty early on, while all this melee and whatever was happening, he got like right up to fourth from the very beginning of, of yeah. like, the early yeah. stages. Yeah. Alonso also was able to just weave through that mess, avoided everything. There's one really cool uh, clip on... Yeah, the onboard clip of the start of uh, Alonso, if you can find that. Mm. Just up to corner four or five. <laughs> yeah, that was great. He just, just, he like, he just, an accident, it's, it's like an accident happened there. Boom. An accident happened there. <laughs> um, no, it's all good. So, yeah that was pretty good to see uh the rest of the race though after that was done i think everybody would agree that it wasn't i mean i wouldn't really necessarily call it a snooze fest but uh yeah i don't know it's it's gotten better for sure it's mm -hmm. like the i'd say it was better than last year which was better than the year before like each year has gotten better and better for the russian grumpy you mean the, yeah the russian <laughs> grumpy yeah yeah just the, this race particular uh bottas and uh Raikkonen, Managed to pass each other, or fall, be following each other for a while. They didn't cra crash each other out like last year. Raikkonen, man, like he was, like no, he, did, uh, he did, he did a couple of good things towards the end of the race. But from the very, like, you know, from uh, from the middle, like early part of the race onwards up until the very end, like he was just kind of dropping the ball or like not just not fighting enough. Yeah, no fighting. Well, yeah. maybe that was his directive, but I don't know. He did get into, like, you know, he. He's on the podium. He was in the podium, but he, he made it to the podium. He was he playing the long game, or was he just sort of sitting back and saying, "You know what? I'm not gonna fight you here. Why yeah, not? No. You, you have a faster car, pal. Go right ahead." Maybe part of his strategy is that now he knows Vettel's engine is, and he, Vettel just got a new transmission because his car was fucked or whatever. That's why he got the penalty. He started further back. Right. But Vettel's engine is now he's one engine one race distance healthier for the rest of uh, the next couple races you know until, until this engine's dead so maybe he just wanted to to keep up with Vettel in that sense like but, not, not run his engine too hard so we're talking about these engines just that are going to run for the next two races really that's that that's it because everybody's bringing new engines to canada yeah i guess that's the idea yeah, yeah. pretty much like I think every every team up and down, or like every manufacturer is going to bring some big updates. I guess the only people that wouldn't be getting any updates would be um, Toro Rosso, just, but every, every, just about everybody else. Do you see too that uh, at the FIA also published uh, the new the the updated token count for for for, for, for this year, like for right now, like did, for where, where, where okay, yeah, we'll, maybe we'll talk about that later. Uh, just like the Ferrari spent like a couple more. Like I, I'll we'll pull it up. We're going to talk about that later. Okay. Um, it, it, but yeah, it's 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 definitely gonna be an engine like the the teams right now, the those that can, will try to save their engines, or use the same engines up until Canada because that's gonna be the first like real like top power hungry track. That would really, I, I think it would make sense though for uh, for uh, Raikkonen mm -hmm. outside of team direction because if they told them you know take it easy so you can keep up. And then with Vettel in the next races or something, that would we would have heard that radio message unless it was a, a coded message like, like Corner said like there's a bird in the tree or whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever the whatever the coded message might be. Yeah, but it would make sense as a he's got enough experience. His his teammate now is gonna have an engine that he can push oh, yeah. harder for push 
thirty percent harder or something yeah. for the next two races. Oh, absolutely, that's he's, that's exactly what's going on. But it's it is it is kind of disconcerting to see reliability problems again in Formula One. I mean, I I like it because they they throw in, you know, they, they spice things up and make you know betting a lot more difficult. But you've been dropping bets. No, no. But <laughs> if I was a betting man, <laughs> um, but seriously, remember last year when like Ferrari didn't really have any reliability problems, Mercedes didn't have any reliability problems really at all. Using one engine less this year. Yeah, exactly. They're using one engine less, and their engines, like on both camps, like at least somebody has had some sort of an engine problem um, in every race weekend that we've had at one point or another. And like Lewis's car, like look, look at what happened to Lewis's car. They were working on it yeah. from from the two from two a.m. or four a.m. in the morning or whatever the day of the race. Mm -hmm. They even had to bring a part that they were missing. Um, from the UK, they flew in the part on a private jet to bring it to Russia. Wow! Like that's <laughs> I heard that that was arranged by by um, by Nicky Lauda through his his Lauda uh, Air, his Lauda Air, yeah, what are his, uh, his contacts in, in the <laughs> flight industry. Uh, Bernie Ecclestone arranged the customs. Bernie Ecclestone, he cut, he allowed Lewis to avoid penalty. He helped him out. But that's oh, yeah. how, that's that, that just goes to show you that that's how serious Mercedes thinks it is, and, and I I know that they keep seeming like they're sandbagging, uh, that 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 they do have like a lot more power than the Ferrari, but they're not, they're committed. They're not just taking it and like like resting back on their laurels, but like, mm. because if you know you could argue that if they if they would have done that or if they if they were out to do that, they probably wouldn't have gone through those lengths. Maybe yes, maybe not, right, but right. They're so clearly they're committed to keeping the fight going, which is good to see, and they're committed with the uh, for for both uh, to both of those uh, uh, other drivers because clearly what would have happened is that if that part hadn't been committed, they would have still been able to race with with just a different spec part mm -hmm. that they, they would they would have put in Lewis's car. But I think that number one, Lewis probably wouldn't have found that very acceptable at this point, you know, with so, somehow with shipping this part, they avoided breaking Park Ferme as well and yes. you would have had to start from the pit lane right. on the last place mm -hmm. so I'm not sure how they avoided that with the flying the part in because if they flew the, if they flew the part in then they, all they had to replace was that part instead of like oh instead of the the bigger the whole part yeah so there's something in the article uh, about the fuel system part something with fuel system mm -hmm. this is the Lewis Spiracy though it's interesting that um uh, <laughs> <laughs> All it's, of it's the interesting that Ecclestone was able to work out the uh, maybe that's what that black box was that he handed off to Putin that we were, we were trying to figure out in the in the photo gallery. <laughs> Putin's holding a little looks like a black wooden box or something like that. When he's know. when he's oh, sitting very be very be lovingly book. beside Bernie Ecclestone, both holding sharing hands. like holding hands, sharing stories of being tyrannical leaders, embracing. <laughs> he was clearly giving him the key to the death star <laughs> yeah. so they can rule as father and son Any, anybody who's ever ordered some shit off ebay or amazon before though from another country your stuff can be in customs for a day or two depending what it is Somehow now, now, through now like imagine that. now imagine a front wing like worth 30 grand yeah, yeah. Or, or engine parts, for go, some go, sort of weird electronics that no one was like going into a electronics. And it's from. not, it's not like this. This trying to make its way to Canada. This would be like going into Russia. Yeah, <laughs> some, some sort of bespoke Papers, electronics please. piece with hoses and stuff coming out of it. Like, what the fuck is this thing? We better uh, check out, check this out for a few no, days. But order, orders came from right at the up at the top from 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 Putin's from President Vladimir's desk himself. <laughs> but for the, for those of you that don't know what Mercedes did this year to appear to the outside, mm -hmm. um, to be fair, um, equitable or whatever with their with their team and to avoid any conspiracy allegedly, yeah. uh, according to them, was to switch the top mechanics. Not all of the but pretty much like all the whole the, mechanics the, team. The top, the top. I heard it was the top five or six guys. I think that's what Total Wolf said. Well, whatever. Yeah, the, what, the top few guys that have been Lewis's and Lewis, the way Lewis put it when, when he was asked about it, he's like, no apparent reason they took away my top mechanics. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he, he, he was he was he 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 was feeling the Lewis spiracy too. Yeah, <laughs> Lewis <laughs> himself. He was, he was pissed off. <laughs> yeah, and, and he said he had no idea why he was 
told about this water thing or the, what, what that was about. That he was certain until this water thing, the water pressure thing came up in the race, he was going to win. But what, what Mercedes did, though, be, was take Lewis's top mechanics and give them to Nico Rosberg and give Nico Rosberg's, in quotes, top mechanics mm. and give them to Lewis Hamilton. The guy's in the same position, but for the other cars. Right, okay. So they became... The, the team leaders for the opposite side of the garage, basically. Same team, you know. Right, right. But we were talking about this on Sunday. Yeah. This is what's been circling around the internet is Nico Ross. He's not making Lewis Hamilton money, Nico Rosberg. Right. But he's got some millions. He's got a few million. Yeah, at least. So maybe he asked a few of those guys how much they're earning. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I could double that, you know. double I could double your salary for you, no problem. You get a few grains of sand in Lewis's <laughs> transmission. <laughs> Maybe put uh, one or two uh, foot pounds less torque on <laughs> some of those spec bolts that are on the engine parts. You know. <laughs> Maybe don't screw down the compartment, engine compartment. You scratch my back and scratch yours. Buddy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it does, does, it does seem, uh, does seem like there's like uh, maybe just a change of guard, yeah. right? For for Mercedes, oh, where yeah. where you know Lewis Hamilton was there, that was the number one horse, yeah. right there, yeah, and then. As uh, this year sort of come and started, Nico Rosberg is the one sort of taking. Maybe the attention is just more on Nico than it was on Lewis. Maybe they. Okay, listen, I want to think there's a, a grand conspiracy. But. At one point or another, teams are like as much as they want to say that they're not that they don't think about it this way. But teams are put in a position where they have to pick one guy over the other yeah and and that typically goes to a championship leader i right. think that at this point you know it being the the longest formula one season in history it's still too early for teams to start like you know actually like allocating them you know that many more resources to the to, to the number one guy right whoever's leading in the constructor championship or sorry the the, the driver's championship but it's too early for that. I think. I think we we still obviously. I, I want to see. I want to see Lewis like fighting back or something, or yeah, yeah. you know, at least at least trying or or, or being given a car or if, if finally having a clean weekend, both mm -hmm. of them, so they can go like side by side and like maybe we'll have something like we did in Bahrain a couple of years ago. Or, it, but, but if it continues this way, and if for whatever miraculous reason. Rosberg keeps just having a lot of good luck, and it's been a lot of good luck that he's had. But if he keeps continuing to have that same good luck, and we're talking about getting close to like halfway through the season, and he's still that much further ahead than Hamilton, I think you'd you'd be naive to not think that yeah, they will be giving like that extra help. To, to Nico just to see him like win the championship because he, maybe, yeah. he just they don't, maybe they want to push him as far as it can go now because yeah. he just be in a Mercedes he just yeah. became the fourth man in history to win seven races in a row yeah who was it Ascari Senna and Vettel v and Vettel yeah Sch no Schumacher and Vettel no, Sch Schumacher and Vettel yeah seven races in a row something like that, yeah and then I think I think the record is nine and I think it's um Schumacher and Vettel is not at both at nine, I think. Not sure. I'm not sure, but I think yeah. that's what it is. And then eight, eight. I don't know. I think well, I think Schumacher and Vettel maybe the only, only guys at eight as well. Either way, he could, he's getting closer. He could like you know what I mean. Like if he's yeah, exactly. If he's given an opportunity to make the history books in that regards, then Mercedes like you'd be stupid to think that Mercedes is not just gunning for him as well mm -hmm. like yeah, yeah plus, like he, said, plus he's german extra publicity and he's and yeah we're the german or with a driver that races under the german flag and who knows if it's his own idea but if you go to nico rosberg's youtube page or his facebook page now or his twitter he's been a lot more active than he's ever been in like social I, media yeah, yeah I, I think his youtube like we watched that youtube video after bahrain he did uh, like a selfie type video mm. in three languages fluent in english german and italian but he just talked about yeah, i just won this race blah, blah blah but he's doing lewis type or more modern sportsman type anyways because lewis <laughs> is the only guy in f1 doing it yeah social media is type stuff but who knows if that was his idea or if the team said hey man you start doing some social media promote this or maybe shit. his own publisher not necessarily the team but like his publisher or his, yeah, his maybe they're like lady. maybe you want some good luck you need some parts start posting some shit on youtube yeah 
Yeah, I don't know. Like, it doesn't seem like he's the type of guy that's into that stuff. Plus, he just had a kid, like, that he would start doing that now, but he's mm-hmm. been doing it. Maybe it's just part of winning. Maybe he just feels really good that he's on a fucking that, streak. He's reaching the top of his career. It does seem it's, a little forced for his sort of personality yes. type. And that, I think and I think that does come across. Like, whenever I see an interview, I'm like, mm, this is not, like, the state in which you like thrive in where right. like you look at Lewis Hamilton or even Vettel. I, I like Vettel handles it so well. He's just cool as a cucumber. Yeah. Except minus the crash. He went through some heavy pressure a couple of years ago with, with media being on top of him and oh, expectations really? and stuff. Like yeah. Four time champion. Right? Oh sure. Yeah, totally. So yeah, he's used to that. He for sure he's used to it, but he, he, he was pretty cool about it, I guess from the very beginning, but no, yeah, I, I see what you mean. Like, yeah. Rosberg's, Rosberg is not his, at the same his level. career up until like he was good enough. He made himself to F1, but like, he hasn't been like dominating anything until no, now. Like now he's really pushing. Like it's it's good for him. Like, I think he's got too a bit of too much negative criticism probably, but yeah, I don't know. We're getting some uh, kind of like lagging out. Oh, everybody, please excuse us while we sort with these it's just the, technical the live, issues. The live yeah, yeah, it's interesting with <laughs> that conspiracy. <laughs> but I don't know. Total Wolf called the conspiracy theories lunatics, and and Ke- and uh, Nikki Lauda said it was total bullshit. Uh-huh. <laughs> he actually mm-hmm. said that on, with Ted. Yeah, um, it doesn't. It does, it's it fits like the conspiracy theory fits the story and all that. Like it could, it's plausible, right? But it doesn't really seem like it makes sense. It's, it's so, how much they're getting paid, and it's and it's early. Yeah, they want both cars to yeah, do as yeah. good as possible. They want to fight for the constructors' championship. That's what matters to the team. It really doesn't make any sense. I think people people are like seeing, yeah, they're reading too much. But you know who? Right. who, who, who but the, the results of the last few races, like wasn't didn't Hamilton kind of get dinged in one of them in the beginning, and he got well, yeah, he's had terrible luck, and then like yeah. um, he got pushed back a bunch of places on the grid. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, he's sort of had like a rough sort of start at it. Where Nico Rosberg, I mean, their pole positions were both pretty good, if I recall, mm-hmm. and and one of them just ended up taking off more so than the other. Hamilton, I think, was extra pissed this weekend because he would have he wanted to like keep the get the hat trick of the Russian Grand Prix. Right. He's won all the modern ones up yes. until this. Oh, so, something interesting that I found out today: Mercedes has won every Russian Grand Prix ever. 19, 13, and 14, two Russian Grand Prix. Mercedes won them both, and then again, 2000, 14, 15, 16. I didn't, I didn't make a mistake there. <laughs> but yeah, they won every Russian Grand Prix ever, going back to 1913. So wait, are you hinting at a conspiracy theory? <laughs> <laughs> no, you just, are. Just dominance. <laughs> a conspiracy of dominance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, nothing wrong with them celebrating that. Same yeah. like Russia will be celebrating the defeat of the Germans in World War Two next weekend. I guess so. They celebrate their def- You know, you know Germany, who was Germany beat Russia in racing. Russia beat them in bombs. You know, you know who was <laughs> Germany. You know who was who wasn't celebrating? Lewis on the podium. He didn't. He yeah, didn't. He, did, he chose he not to spray the champagne. He chose to not. I mean, spray the, the Shandong. The sh- <laughs> <laughs> he, did, he didn't even spray it. He kind of stood back. He had a. Uh, half ass sip and mm-hmm. that was sad that was yeah. sad to see Louis, was he, change your little, attitude come on this, he, was he a little butt hurt oh yeah, yeah all man. the butt hurts oh man that sucks yeah I don't want to see that he did his best he he said that two weeks ago his fear was unbreakable and all these guys <laughs> getting psychological therapy for the races are bitches and that stuff you, doesn't you know help. what you know what it is you know what it is he's gotten too much into his album yeah. he's gotten too much in that space he's hanging with the crowd that's just like yo yo you're the best dog yeah, you're the yeah. best yeah, I can, I, can you imagine being a yeah. little cs man oh he yeah. probably has like he has him for high <laughs> oh shit yeah oh there's people that do it for free oh yeah yeah so, so where's roscoe yeah <laughs> where's roscoe <laughs> Man, if, if I see tears come out, I'm not going to ever believe anything he says again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm unbreakable, man. Come on. It's second place from 10th. Yeah. yeah, that, was, yeah that, that was great. That was a great drive. Yeah. Man, what do you want, man? Come on. Yeah, calm down. <clears throat> I'm going to need a, like a tax, but like you press a button and tax come out, like thumbtacks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's... It, it, uh, 
it wasn't a great race in comparison with the ones that we've had so far. But I think it wasn't we were, the best of the year. We've, it... we've been we've been hashtag blessed with many good races. One of the best first laps of the year, maybe yeah. maybe the best first lap. Yeah, They've all been pretty incredible. Yeah, but yeah, I, th- I thought that it was good, and we saw we saw a co- a couple of interesting things towards the back of the pack. Um, Magnuson clearly like stating his superiority at least so far like really actually this time mm. stamping it uh on jolly and palmer's face mm. <laughs> um we've had like we we keep seeing a lot of verline go some good moves yeah the the mclaren really getting up there now again but on merit i think yeah. i think that the mclaren they got they got really close to points um earlier in the year but it would have been because you know a few other people had accidents or whatever but no this time i think that fernando alonso made it there made it up to, up to six and it was really good it was right like due to like a, a good conservative run and, and what you said that at, the, at one point he he had his fastest lap and he basically decided like hey i'm just gonna try this out i'm gonna like yeah give it four beans and see and see what she does and oh, alonso yeah oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> he, he said that in the post race yeah. like lap 50 51 52 yeah he saved saved gas for a few laps then gave it full power he's, he's like oh, at least i had fun for a lap you know i saw how what, it, what she could do and this is what we have to strive for all the, to do this all the time yeah I, th- I think it's encouraging to see um mclaren oh, back in the yeah. back in the points back it's, finding their way up it's so depressing as a fan though to see how happy alonso got to do one lap fast <laughs> yeah. and like, we'll get into this in a bit, but for next year, agreeing on a fuel increase of 5%. Yeah, not enough. Come on, man. That's nothing. So you no. could go fast for two laps. Come on, man. Like, go. Then somebody asked Button. I, f- mm. I, th- I figured if it was on TED this weekend, either the Quali show, some something on Sky, they asked um, Button, what, what was your, I think maybe the press conference, what was your favorite era? Like, you've been here through three or four of yeah, the press conference. different different styles of cars and engines yeah. and he said definitely 2004 where you're just on it pushing for the whole yeah. lap you're like almost driving like you're on rails He's like, it's like a different type of driving but something close to that mm-hmm. now it's nothing like that at all no no there's like, like eighteen thousand rpm for an hour <laughs> come on you don't even get that for half a second anymore the yeah. engine will bro- blow up well, I mean, it probably is. won't, but they, they, yeah, they they're, not just, they're just not meant. They're not allowed. They, they, these engines are just not meant to do that. Bernie said no. They, they are. They are a huge, uh, a, a huge achievement. Let, let, let's not. Let's not say that they're not. These these new engines and the new formula. formula yeah, they're cool. <clears throat> they are the most efficient engines, or I guess power units that that man has ever made. At least at least some of them. Maybe mm. not all of them, but <laughs> the Mercedes certainly. So that that should not be overlooked. But did we get there maybe by 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 peeling the the banana the wrong way? Probably. And that's the whole point with the, with, <laughs> with these with these regulations, <clears throat> which apparently we got we got new we, we, we the, finally they confirmed we were we were talking about this deadline approaching earlier in the podcast, way early actually probably like since last year, and it's it's finally here. We finally gotten to some clear concise. And, and, and well written out rules for 2017. Actually, I have no idea. Because yeah, I think <laughs> I think it was kind of buried yeah. a little bit. That like, was so weird. Like, hey, yeah, nobody heard anything about him. There were some stories. I read some stuff, but a lot of it got buried. Like the articles I read mm-hmm. and they're sort of like not even there now. They're about engine a little bit. Mm. Nothing about, nothing re-mentioned about the tire agreement, the tire width, the testing, the aerodynamics, the fuel consumption was a, a sort of big story that was agreed. That's happening five yeah. percent, one hundred five kilos next year. Okay, so we're gonna talk about twenty seventeen now. Uh sure, yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's talk about twenty seventeen. Yeah, so pff, I don't know, the four teams. To- Total Wolf was the mouthpiece about it. The four manufacturers. The four, yeah. no, no, no. The four teams powered by Mercedes. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Toy- with Total Wolf being sort of the, the mouthpiece of them, yeah. Which are uh, Mercedes, Williams, Force India, Manor, and the and the Manor team. Mm-hmm. They they all 
we're against it. And because Mercedes is against it, because of what you just said, Mercedes has probably, as far as anyone knows, outside of the military, perhaps the yeah. most efficient gas burning machine ever built by humans. Right. It burns gas more efficient than anything. So their whole thing and the, the what Honda is really pushing the reason they're here, the reason they haven't left, the reason they're still competing is the technology. They want to extract technology and put it into their cars. Right. Because Tesla is about to fuck everybody up <laughs> yeah. in, in car sales with efficiency. Yeah. So, yeah, th those four teams, they got four votes. Obviously not enough. They all voted no on the fuel increase. Mm. But five kilos, man, like that's still sending a green message like we're racing everyone's trying to reduce emissions whether you're buying like a jumbo jet or a train or a boat or whatever everything yeah. is it, when you go to buy something like that that runs on gas one of the things they're going to sell you on is efficiency yeah maybe before maybe depending what you're buying maybe just below the luxury sales is the efficiency <laughs> yeah man but it's racing though it's formula one there's only 22 cars it's not like a and what everyone says, like the, the planes, the transportation alone burns hundreds of times more gas than any of those cars could burn, could possibly burn oh, yeah. in a year. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah it's, I don't know. Well, whatever. They're, they're against it, but it's happening. We're getting five extra kilos. But the thing is, if anyone that doesn't know, before we came to these hybrid engines mm -hmm. three years ago, the limit was 150 kilos, even before the refueling, the they were starting the race and running to the end and empty with 150 kilos yeah to run flat out the whole time let's let them do if you that. want yeah if you want <coughs> you didn't have to start with 150 but that was the limit 150 percent man go back to that not 105 put the zero in the wrong spot <laughs> another thing Five that kilos man one thing that was <sighs> that, that was agreed though is basically this this whole thing that came about because of the red bull mess when they were jumping around not having an engine um mm. that now if a team doesn't have an engine or is facing a situation where they don't have an engine there there, there will be uh, uh, an obligation to supply that obligation can, to supply that can be activated by the fia but i think the way that this works is so say right it wouldn't have really helped red bull that much except no. they wouldn't have be calling their engine a tag hoyer but they had the renault contract yeah. they're using renault engines and they're like Ferrari, give us an engine. Mercedes, give us an engine. They both said no. And this is a quote from Bernie Ecclestone because Bernie Ecclestone threatened today mm. after this agreement was made. Bernie Ecclestone threatened to scrap the engine agreement oh, as yeah. it was agreed yesterday, on Saturday, two days ago. Jesus as it was Bernie. just agreed, he threatened to scrap it. Mm. But he said we wouldn't be down this road if Mercedes or Ferrari at the request of Red Bull had just given them an engine. Right. But I think the way that the obligation to supply would go is that Mercedes in that situation, Mercedes or Ferrari wouldn't have been obliged nope. to supply Red Bull engines. No, 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 because it's but not Renault would have. Yeah. Because they were already running those engines. Yeah. Th then the FIA could say, sorry, Renault, you have to get because Red Bull was talking shit about mm -hmm. or sorry, Red yeah, Red Bull was talking shit about Renault. Yeah. And they're like they worked out a deal to call it a watch engine and then they gave it to them. Yeah. But under this, they would have just said, all right, Ren you're going to run Renault's and the, mm -hmm. the other guys it. don't want to. So that's yeah, the obligation. It's, it's not a, yeah, it's, it's an obligation for a team that, that actually doesn't have, uh, that, that wouldn't have had yeah, a, a, an engine. It's not like, uh, I don't like my engine. Uh, give, give, give me another engine obligation. Whether like, we don't know how much of a threat or reality was in it, but Red Bull was talking about, going to their own outside supplier perhaps hiring a company to them design and get their engine built for them yeah. they're gonna build their own but no, that, that, so never, that never went that's one of the rules for 2017 <coughs> you know, at least we don't have to talk about bullshit as much bullshit news that that's what that rule does <laughs> yeah 105 kilos of fuel echo stone <laughs> wants to scrap this based on the engines agreeing to equalize power to right within. yeah the whole equalization thing which he, is what he was hoping for last year was a two or three percent amount but when you're up into like the 900 to a thousand horsepower that's still a big gap that's a gap so what they want their benchmark to be is they want the cars to be within 
0.3 seconds on the Barcelona circuit. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. So if yeah, who the, who the fuck's driving? Yeah. How what? How cold is it outside? Jesus. Whose gas are yeah. you putting in there? Well, yeah, what kind of gas? Each each engine has its own bespoke gasoline that yeah. they have to distill for each each race. <laughs> Come on, this is it's getting crazy. That's a, that's another rule that we have for next year. They're getting ridiculous. I couldn't find any info about the aero aerodynamics and <laughs> they, they, two meter wide cars, the low wings, the fat wing, <clears throat> the fat back. It seems like that is just not what was on in, in the chat. It, the, the main points were cost, which is going to be reduced by a mere one million uh, euros next per year. year. Yeah, and then three and more. And then three mil for the years eighteen. 18 to 20 inclusive something 3 million a year something like that um no just just from from 2018 from tw like at 20 like 1 1 million less 2017 and 3 million less 2018 part, <coughs> part of the i think cost reduction and power convergence mm -hmm. that and th this i wasn't able to find maybe you know if it was finally agreed was Ecclestone and the FIA were trying to enforce certain material choices for certain parts and i think even geometries of certain parts to limit power like you'd say like the piston rods could only be made of aluminum or something instead of using magnesium or so it was right. i don't know all the details and i don't know if it was agreed but that was a suggestion that i had read that that's so stupid yeah certain because the engines have each manufacturer like there's a basic thing that you need need to build these type of engines and then there's mm -hmm. all the crazy stuff that they try right the, the differences but all the basic stuff that a gas engine needs it's in it's in your truck outside right it's in every car you've ever owned i like they, how you called it a truck when it's not a suv makes feel like a man a suv no, 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 don't go back <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had the honda version of that before uh but anyway the the basic parts that all the engines need to set limits on their their engineering so that you would limit the power that way mm. Th that gets so crazy so I, I don't know if that stuff was agreed no it's it's it seems like not so yeah again going back so there's only like a, a few things so cost <laughs> supply you know we, we talk about the supply. supply uh performance convergence and sound the sound the noise uh, generator a standardized noise generation device <laughs> A noise, re some sort of resonator, Jeez. some sort of like. What? Basically, they just, they just they, what they actually agreed actually to is, bring is, that in two thousand eight. Give them till two thousand eighteen. Yeah, to standardize it. Some sort of pro, like no, they, they have to. They, they're basically going to conduct some research. Now, the research could go that way in some sort of yes. noise generating generating machine, or or. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or it could go another way. Well, let's hope that it doesn't come to that because that's that's retarded. Um, w one thing, you know, while this whole uh, situation about the, um, the, the the changing of the rules and whatever was coming up, um, Pat Simmons from from uh, from Williams and and a few other people were vocal about just pointing out that he's like, listen, like, oh, it, this is getting out of hand. Like, it's not really helping anything. Total Wolf was saying, like, it, this is not, none of this is going to uh, help overtaking. Like, do we need, the tw uh, do we need a, a change for 2017 of the rules, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and they, uh, a few people kept pointing at the fact that Bernie was one of the, like, the staunchest opponent or, or proponents that, like, his deal was, like, cars, they have to be faster. They have to be faster by five seconds. Or they have to be fastest, you know. They, they, we, mm -hmm. we have to we have to build faster cars, and that has to be the 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 aim of Formula One and and the aim of these of these new rules. <clears throat> and now the way that they that the teams are gonna go about and implement it is uh, the way things stand is gonna is gonna mean like changes to aero and making it more aero dependent or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's that's not what the fans want, and that's what, what that's what people are, are up in arms because you you could do a number of things like making your car like more efficient you know aerodynamically but you can also like do it so that the air that comes out of the car after your car has, has used it is all turbulent but and then thus making it harder to be overtaken and, and like and, 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 you know well, later, you've seen those quality slow-mos <laughs> yeah with the, oh, the vortices the coming off boiling off as uh, brando said yeah. did you see that no 
See if you can find uh, just a, it's um, Rosberg's car was a big one. Rosberg Vortex Russia. Try that uh, or Vortices. But basically, you could see coming off the back wings of both sides because it was uh, just just cold, humid air. Yeah. You could see the. It's like when you see the chemtrails on or the chem in quotations, the chemtrails <laughs> on a plane or whatever. Yeah. Just because the air is cold and dense. But you could see these two circling like crazy tornadoes. tornado vortexes coming off there were something like two or three feet long and that's what you could see that's what uh, they're bigger than that that's just what you could see causing a huge double tornado to yeah to suck off the that back was, of your car that was a really really pretty shot like how you could see the 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 aerodynamics in motion yeah and it's it's what you said and like what We've heard Pat Simmons say a couple of times in the last like month or two yeah. since he's been sort of uh, like prophesizing that this point that a lot of the teams are as much as they're trying to set the aerodynamics to help themselves. Yeah, they at least half or close to half of that effort is to fuck up the car behind oh, you, yeah. the following car. Oh yeah, like you'll sacrifice your own aerodynamics to possibly fuck up anyone that might be trying to pass you to screw oh, yeah. to fuck with their car because that's all they can do that's that's how they can they can the get battle. advantage yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's that's one way to the do way it. it is yeah and it's only it's gonna get whatever 50 percent more that way next year i do want to say something though regarding percentage regarding is. these uh in because because then people have been saying like no then that, that's that's the wrong way to to approach things the cars don't need to be necessarily faster we can, yeah. uh, you know, if, if the cars are second, I five, harder I five to second, yeah, well, that, that's the thing. And, 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 and like starting from the bottom up again, I think, and, 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 and going back to what we've talked about in, the, in this podcast before, what is the essence of F1, right? And what, what is, what, what is F1 and what makes F1 the big deal that it is? And what, why is it different than any other category of motorsport? And it always seems to be falling back to that thing that, F1 is F1, and it's the big deal because it's it's the, the pinnacle of motorsport, right? The best racing series. They go around and like they they, they compete in the Grand Prix, the Grand Prix, because they're the highest price of, of motorsport. Mm -hmm. But like, what is again in trying to find out what that means and trying to like go back to that original idea? I think one of the ways that you can actually have a realistic claim to something like being the the pinnacle of motorsports is to have the absolute fastest cars. Mm -hmm. Even if, even if you want to like add an addendum to that and say the fastest cars <laughs> around the track or around like a, a not not an oval like a, just around the track. Okay, yeah, there right. If, if there is a limit, there's an aerodynamic and horsepower limit. So you can't just but, ge gear the car to go 500 because it won't go that fast but yeah why not make the fastest cars yeah have the fastest cars a lot of the is... safety rules though as i always talk about have been to slow the car down slow it down cars are going too fast cars are going too fast well, well, but, but the modern circuits are built that's exactly in it, it, it instead of um they have made things safe but with things like the hands devices you know whatever like in in, in all the uh, crash structures and just material sciences it's a very interesting field it's it's really a the lot head, the head bolsters this year have gotten like five times stronger yeah so you can you can make the car safer but you know in, in, <laughs> in much the same way that 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 you know that that, that spider-man quote with great power comes great responsibility <laughs> i think that with great Horse safety power or no or responsibility well, and, and with great safety advances should come at least as, as far as f1 is concerned should come an increase in speed if these guys and let's be honest these cars and i know that people say oh but but jules bianchi but let's 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 if we treat that as the outlier accident that it actually is statistically yeah um we see that the cars are safer now alonso was able mm -hmm. to walk away from that horrible crash uh, in Australia, yeah, but minimally... that's also an outlier, right? But they are the, the cars are safer. Mm. There isn't; a, a it few, is not a few kilometers per hour difference. Isn't really going to save exactly. So, life. so push that limit further. Yeah. Give him the, the speed because, like you said, exactly. Like as the cars become faster, they are. There's going to be a bit more of the control of how your race goes. Mm -hmm. 
that is handed back to the driver, not just to the engineer. Then it's going to become more of a, of a of a skill thing, more of your your talent, and you will be able as the cars go faster. If you have the fastest cars, you have to have the fastest reactions. You have it. You, the driver becomes. It's not. Then it's not more about like saving tires, saving this, saving that. Like no, if you can actually like if they can give you the fastest cars to go faster, there's there, there's that about it. Now, how do you go about making the car fast? Is what what is kind of you know becoming the problem and like ruining the sport and whatever they, they can be decided because really i mean what you want what you would want is more mechanical grip as one of the main things right they are getting that but they're getting a huger they're getting a lot more mechanical grip but a bigger proportion of downforce as well at but, the same time but speed and, and the highest speeds is what what these drivers love that's what they thrive on they're good mm-hmm. drivers the drivers that we all the, that we all like the you know the, the ones that really inspire some passion Vettel, alonso hamilton they thrive on the highest speeds and you can see them at work you can see their brilliance when they're going fast as hell right now this is all coming at the same time that like, let's let, let's look into the future here. Let's not wait, be, wait. just be, just before you Sorry. step in. This related, yeah. Just to say, last year, Danny Rick, who I get, we're gonna start talking about it in a minute because he's one of the biggest pushers of this safety thing. True. Tried the canopy. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. But last year, through the mm-hmm. whole season, he was the driver who hit the highest speed. Mm-hmm. Danny Rick has the high speed record. I don't know if it's ever, but he had the high speed last year. He had three sixty four in Mexico. I remember that. 2015 the highest speed reached by yeah. f1 in 2000 it was 364 who's ever been 364 that's listening here aside from an airplane <laughs> yeah aside from an airplane i've been like 900 okay but that's totally different than being the only person in a car going 364 and then make sure you slow down before that corner right yeah the airplane goes 900 for like 12 hours at be- without stopping it's <laughs> Yeah, nothing's in your way. It's not really dangerous. But yeah, yeah. this this way, yeah, this is a sort of a, it's a philosophical debate almost in, uh, yeah, in F one at this point. Oh, oh absolutely. Two thousand seventeen and the canopy. And <laughs> the thing about it is, is that anything that Bernie says, like just because of the history behind it and like the way that thing, the things that he says, get ev- eventually made it to actually to implementation. Almost like agreeing with Bernie is is like telling the whole world the whole f1 world that you're a lunatic but i think that there is definitely something to this because again looking at the future and if this is the near future that i'm talking about we're seeing other um other series outside of f1 mm. uh, that, that are that are getting a lot of attention in terms of motorsports i'm not even gonna touch uh, moto gp they have their own <laughs> their own claim to fame and their own following or whatever but i'm talking more about uh things like formula e right formula e. just d- doing in, doing in the, the right you know mo- moving like rattling the right boxes in, in terms the, of like nascar is more popular than ever still it's growing ex- explosively nascar yeah well not nascar has it as its following yet yeah, indy Why? but also like things like your uh europe uh, the, the fia european formula three um, the, the feeder series are getting a lot of attention. Uh, the, the fastest growing motorsport right now is um, r- Rally Cross. The rally Cross that yeah. you're watching. Rally Cross. There's gonna be more things, you know, that people that in the past, if you were in a country like Canada or like whatever, they would have gotten into Formula One or they would have seen like the the, the the claim of Formula One being you know the best, the pinnacle of motorsport is because it was the most available out there. You could watch Formula One in pretty much any country out there or whatever, because because so you something know something to do on Sunday, right? It was yeah, grandma's it, it, it at was church. Just, let's, let's watch some Formula One. Yeah, it was it was on TV, right? It was it was on yeah. TV. Da 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 da. da like it, it was, was the only, only thing. Like nine channels back then, fifteen channels, and it was the only like no, motor series channels. Be, be, because of the big, uh, you know, the, the the different countries and whatever, and like the deals that it had in place, it was the only motorsport series that really could afford to have that much widespread coverage. But now with the internet, with new media, even mm-hmm. Formula Three, let's say, or or just like lo- like Rallycross or whatever, are getting huge exposure out there. Yeah. And there's gonna come a point where you're gonna like you're gonna have a legitimate choice of whether or not. And like this is today, right now, I'm sure th- like this exists for mo- for a lot of people. You can watch Formula One to like satisfy your motorsport crave, but just as easily you're gonna be able to watch just about any like, or at least the the the, the top feeder series and other like related motorsports like WC, 
uh, uh, touring car races and all that is going to become more and more and more popular more there's going to be more options more um, alternatives to f1 available and then at that point in a world where you're you're competing your series is competing against something like formula e that somebody else might genuinely find more interesting than formula one or somebody might genuinely find for um the european formula three championship more uh more interesting than formula one because it's either more fights or whatever whatever the reason might be just then there has to be f1 has to have one legitimate claim to actually be able to promote itself as as the the best and 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 the easiest one to achieve i think the way it looks like it would be increasing the speed yeah why not something i was just gonna say in in that vein is that compared to a decade ago or two decades back when motorsport was arguably more popular than now maybe uh, so something i keep saying for every sport for youtube like what we're doing now podcasting music fucking movies tv there's so many tv shows right now is if you compare now to like uh maybe like 15 years ago, something around there, the population of the earth has doubled. <laughs> we were at like, I remember like in the end of high school, we were like, holy shit, there's like 5 billion people on earth. Yeah. Now we're getting close to nine or eight or nine. Yeah. You're getting just eight. around eight. Yeah. Close to eight. Like the population of the earth has doubled since the late nineties. There's twice as many. And it's not like doubled from like oh, a couple of millions or whatever. There's billions. eight billion people in earth now. And, and then you, in with the racing stuff like MotoGP, Formula yeah. Three, Rallycross, the level of tech in those cars yeah, is at crazy. the level it's affordable now to people that want to do that as a career to get into it, form a team and stuff, like be sustainable. Mm-hmm. To the level that F1 was 15 years ago when it was that True. popular. Yeah, you, you get like because F1 is way be, you can say it's way beyond now. The cars mm. like a supercomputer run by like 30 p- it takes 30 people to drive an f1 car yeah so like to drive it competitive like to drive it, it takes one guy what competitively yeah. to really it's challenge a whole, a whole team to challenge yeah. 10 other teams it takes a whole team of people yeah absolutely this is a whole new level yeah and well, okay so let's go as fast as possible yeah i think i think that that is something that f1 can strive for and we shouldn't like i think we sh- we just shouldn't be put off by by all this stupidity of what the implementation of that means or, or has meant so far yes more aerodynamics is not the way to go i i, I don't agree with that 100 percent. just from this mini debate that we just yeah. had that yeah i can't believe i'm saying it i think bernie might be right about this point <laughs> but maybe you have to go a little bit faster yeah we get a close edge closer to 400 I th- now wasn't there a problem with the I remember we talked about this maybe a few podcasts ago but it, there was a there was a problem with pirelli and because there was because of the higher speeds no what no it wasn't yeah. necessarily yes indirectly because of the high speeds but right because the way that they wanted to achieve the highest speeds was by adding more downforce, downforce. and then downforce was, was with the problem too right. much downforce then they couldn't build the tires that they needed to build right. with with, uh, with so much downforce because then that would imply the, the amount of da- downforce that they were seeking at first would have implied that they would have had to like basically design completely different tires and right. that didn't fit the model that that they wanted with these yeah, the high, tires high, high degradation. They would have ended up being like a and steel mesh. Lines, yeah. But they would have, they got the testing that they're looking for. They're getting 25 car days. Mm-hmm. Don't get it confused with days. 25 car days of testing mm-hmm. of the new tires for Pirelli. 25? 20, yeah, so 25. But yeah, so to do what they originally wanted, they would have had to do something probably that the teams didn't want, like put a steel mesh in the tires. And then like that, that might have negated. Would have heavier and negate mm-hmm. some of the inertia. Or, or, or just the speed even like it yeah. wouldn't it wouldn't have in the end made it faster because they had to the let's say just to, to simplify it, show up with heavier tires right but probably have been granted and the it's kind of weird like some teams are going to get an advantage they haven't announced what teams or if it'll be a lottery or who wants to do it or whatever but teams are going to have to provide an extra car to go test but I don't, do you know how many cars they're going to use how many teams the data is going to be shared. No, the well, it's basically all the data. however however many want to show up, but only like the ones that can afford it will show up. Let's right. be honest. But the, right. the testing <laughs> is limited to 25 eight-hour car days, as far as I know. Or maybe okay. they're 10-hour car days. So say like if five cars show up, they can test for five eight-hour days with five cars. Mm-hmm. Or if four cars show up, you know what I mean? They'll test for six days. or They'll reach tw- the max is 25 cars days on the road i don't know how to it's weird it's it's a weird uh 
It's kind of a weird um, idea. But yeah, they, they haven't announced how many cars, how many days. Which cars? What track? Right. Which cars? It would probably be like somewhere in Spain or, or Abu Dhabi, I guess. They've been guaranteed that they will get current year cars to test with, though. Because originally they wanted to build a Pirelli test car that would be like somewhat the specs with a V8. Just a, some cheap engine in there that would generate co- some kind of horsepower. It's uh, weird. It's weird. Uh, <laughs> do, you know, do you know who the... Uh, the Pirelli uh, uh, the test driver is Who, P- Pirelli's own yeah, test driver. Pirelli's, you know how like that, this is the illustrious post of at one point or another was occupied by Jaime Algersuari after he was booted out of F1 for not seating to Vettel. Uh, <laughs> you know who's doing that like this year, I guess, and maybe for the next couple of years. Not just why. Pastor Maldonado. 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 He's... Maldonado got the gig. <laughs> Hired by Pirelli. <laughs> But wait, I thought they were going to have <laughs> F1 drivers in the F1 cars doing the test. No, no, but, but, but Pirelli also has their own, like, like their their test driver, right? Oh. <laughs> but So they're going to have to choose one of the cars that shows up to let him drive it? No, no, no. For, for, <laughs> for, for let's say, outside of this event, right. if they want to, like, just try with, like, one of their, like, little Pirelli, like... Sh- like, like a show-off day to sell tires? Like a... No, 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 no. For, like, for actually... To actually do testing on the tires on, like, other... V- like, other vehicles. Like, they'll have, like, a nice, like, oh, single-seater. so, like, their road... Like, if you want to buy Pirellis for your... Your would, road... Your car and your, your driveway. No, it'll be, like, a development one. Like, for motorsport. Like, oh, he... For like, for, yeah, for motorsport. Like, not the, F1, though. No, not... Like, okay. but... but <laughs> no, but some of the testing Perhaps. that he'll be doing, like, like some of the things that Pirelli, like, learn maybe or not if you know after they're after they're done cleaning all the debris of the track <laughs> that they might learn from some of maldonado's tests they will apply maybe to their f1 program but yes they probably want to test the tires <laughs> to the maximum stress level right? yeah <laughs> test them to the breaking point the guy with the biggest balls in f1 according to him <laughs> crash tonato so crasher he's not a completely out of a job he's he's barely cis driver I, th- I thought that was funny uh do you guys want to take a break soon i kind of want to fix this stream the, the lag okay all right yeah. yeah i think uh can we close on that or unless you guys yeah it's up to you i guess so that's most of 2017 so we'll come back with uh the canopy yeah. talk about the canopy and a few little odd things here and there cool Alrighty. hello switch it up hey we're guys. back we're back <laughs> stop talking about all this stuff bad colors yes so <laughs> i saw I, Another thing that we saw this, this this last weekend, I think that I get it got buried in the other news, really. I mean, but at the beginning of the Russian Grand Prix weekend, we were talking about how Red Bull actually went out and like practice, like they, they did a couple laps with that with their version of the head protection, the, the canopy, the additional head protection. They're calling theirs the canopy. What, what I mean, what, there's, why there's not the a halo, really, there's the halo concept and the canopy concept? Yeah, it's like a windshield. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's Lewis, a windshield. Right. Well, Lewis was very critical, calling it a riot shield. It looks like it looks like a fucking That's police a bit riot dramatic. shield. That's a bit dramatic. I don't know. I kind of uh, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't mean it doesn't look like that. Right. But... No, that's yeah. absolutely true. I put a handle on there. The guy behind it's got a helmet on mm. and a bodysuit. <laughs> I don't know. boots. And, a, and an over business, and, a no, and, an, and an overinflated ego, <laughs> but mm. see, well, I, I, Dan, I think Danny Rick's pretty cool. <laughs> I think uh, you didn't get too. If this does no. take off, I'm not saying I think it should. Okay, I'm not saying I think it should, but if it does, I think it'll start making F1 evolve into the future. Uh, which I feel is inevitable, where everything looks like it's from outer space, uh, and so this is the first steps. This yeah. is like you know, uh, you know that evolutionary picture of like there's like a monkey and then the man on the end, and like <laughs> yeah. it's slowly going over. Okay. This is the this is like the second monkey, right? The, fir- <laughs> the first monkey is no windshield. This is like oh fuck, okay, and then the next few get faster and sleeker looking. That's what I want. I want this thing to look like it's from an anime. That's how <laughs> cool I want. It could still be a V six hundred. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It just. It, it does. It look, does look cool. This looks better than it looks cool. Halo. It looks oh no, better Halo. Than the Halo. You know what? I think I've been dancing around it a little bit, but yeah. I think I'm gonna say. You know. Somebody might die. There's no. But, somebody might die, but I don't think they should bring this in. 
Right. Yeah. Right. It's Even not, though it's the, not solving any problems, as the quote said, the cat's out of the bag. The the ideas out there. The, oh, it, we have to do it now. All know, that no, stuff. That's, that's thinking. It's thinking too no short term, man. A I, th- I think, like, as as always, if one is is thinking too short term no. and and just not no focusing on what they should be focusing to to, to solve. Let's say let's say they do come up with something like this. Okay. Right. Let's, right. Say, let's, let's say that this is what is going to be in the rules. What if? Immediately right after that, they just come up with a better solution that doesn't involve anything like this. I think th- that because of the like ego, a force field. No, not necessarily. We've a already force talked field. about that. But <laughs> yeah. let, let, let's think for a second. How about just you know, it, material sciences is one of the fastest, most like ridiculously like leaping and evolving fields right now. Yeah, and. What if all of a sudden, with all this new development, with like graphene or whatever, they just come up with a better solution, or like maybe even something that just will make? Why not just invest in in pushing forward and really, really developing s- some helmet technology? Why don't we just make the helmets capable of of taking that impact of a tire coming at you or whatever, and like just have the helmet mm. still be you still the, get all the, the protection you still get the neck acceleration even if the helmet doesn't def- deform or deflate mm-hmm. you still get the yeah so work on that the, the head defle- right, but the neck like, deflection so it's... so work on that you know so work on that they, you don't understand how like then cuz then if you if you if you work on that technology there could be so many dev- like applications for that technology that are just not about motorsport worthy. We're talking about like this. We were just saying about going to the moon or whatever, and like how the European Space Space, space uh, Agency wants to put people out there permanently and whatever. They're these- going. To, there's going to be. There's a race now between yeah. Europe, China, the United States. Yeah, with these ba- put, basically these domes, a permanent like base on the moon, built to build a, a mine. <laughs> <laughs> to dig up ice and build hydrogen and oxygen fuel be- stations. Because that, the moon doesn't but, have a, an 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 atmosphere, like there could be like all kinds of space junk flying at anybody that's doing yeah, a, a moonwalk. Why not? Why not spend your money? You're not gonna like, you know what I mean? Like this could be an actual technology that could be used. I mean, and as far fetched as that sounds, tell me if not, if you didn't, if you don't, like, if if you wouldn't think that technology that let's say they come up with like the impenetrable helmet or helmet system body protection system that like eliminates all that jerk or whatever that you get from being hit and like the head acceleration or, or and, and all that and you can port that easily to like a moonwalking vehicle you know what i mean like it, there could be applications for that there is absolutely no application Bungie. yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> there's no other application to the windscreen so why is F1 stuck on trying to bring things from the past instead of like looking towards developing like for the future? There's no analy- analytics or, or evidence to support that it needs to happen, mm-hmm. right? And uh, they're trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist. It's, I like Justin it. Wilson, a lot of people are arguing about him, would have been saved. Uh, Joe Bianchi would not have been saved. Going back like a decade now, Massa wouldn't have been in a coma with this, but... You know, you know. I, I don't want to give any. I'm gonna find. I'm gonna. Look, I just wrote it down, so I'm gonna find this out for next week. But in the past week, mm-hmm. it wasn't Schubert or Arai or any of the racing helmet mm-hmm. technology companies. But some of these. It, I don't want to say. I don't want to say. Give any credit or take any credit away from anyone. But I saw this because this is a big. Um, I don't know subject. I guess in football, you American football. Not, not soccer, but American football, where they wear helmets and they kind of run headfirst into each other like like goats and they smash heads. There's a new technology, a new helmet tech that was just kind of developed. And everyone, well, I don't know if anyone knows, but one of the big things with head trauma in auto racing, in football, or in combat sports, or any any kind of sport where you might hit your head, is you hit your head, you get a concussion from your brain sloshing <laughs> around and basically bouncing off the walls of your skull like you're, yeah. you hit your head and your brain kind of goes the other way and sloshes around this new helmet tech which i don't know if they can bring it into f1 or mm-hmm. how relevant it is but it's something new i'll find out for next week i'll get into more detail but it's sort of some sort of i think it's a liquid filled helmet type thing that when you they showed a regular helmet versus this in slow motion slamming into a wall side by side and the one helmet 
deformed and sort of absorbed the energy and didn't transfer it to the person's neck, the player's neck or, or head. Right. And the other helmet, which is what it's kind of been using now, like, you know, your head gets sloshed around. You you get, like, that punch drunk or football drunk, like, a lot of sports get. Or, or this, if, 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 auto racing, if you get into an accident. It's far more rare. I think I think brain injury in auto racing, whether it's Formula One or NASCAR or Indy or any of these crazy sports right. or MotoGP, is lower incidence than probably okay. football, yeah. soccer, rugby, or MMA, which those are probably the four other most dangerous head trauma sports where you're like part of the sport the point of mma is smashing your head and like kicking the other guy in the head part of the sport of football like, is r- lining, it's really lining up rugby with like american too. football you line up in two lines and you smash your head in, heads into each other with with rugby or like uh, like australian football type thing or you kind of like you all do that scrimmage and you huddle and you, yeah. you push as hard as you can like yeah. rubbing your trying to like crush the other guy's ear lobes right. or something like <laughs> yeah right you try to but smash. even in that sport it's it's different just because you're not protected and these obviously these guys are very very strong and tough yeah and, and they've sort of built this resilience but they're not actually slamming their heads into each other like i yeah. played rugby in high school and like you're locking with people right mm-hmm. there's there's a certain like connection that you just like no I, we, you know you don't want to fuck each other up yeah that's not the point like you, you want to be stronger than the other guy obviously yeah. but you're not there to fuck them up like like an nfl player is like no no i have to move as fast as i can but to knock this guy over that's part of the culture my... of like american football players right. if you want to be an american football player at the top of the na nf sorry the uh nfl nhl nfl, no, the NFL H- the football NFL. league yeah, right, the right. nfl football league you start in high school and you mm-hmm. listen to your coach, you're going to get yelled at, and he's going to tell you to smash your head harder into yeah, the right. other guy. Like, that's, right. that's part of the culture of it. Like, don't be a pussy. If you're not going to smash your head. You're not playing on Sunday. You can, maybe you'll make the practice, but you know what I mean? And these guys, part of... I, I'm, I'm trying to... I'm kind of rambling, but I think pulling this around a little bit. These guys in modern F1, this mm-hmm. modern league, yeah. They used to practice, like, there used to be rules, or no rules, basically, like, Ferrari owns their own racetrack. Mm-hmm. There's the Red Bull ring now. You used to take mm-hmm. your car out, build it at the factory, and you get the drivers there, and you just test it all day, every day. You mm-hmm. run them around. You could crash and die at any time. These guys now are practicing at home on computers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we watched that Red yeah. Bull video, I think, of Verstappen a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sky went to his house and, like, you know, show, show us like uh, your garage, your go karts and stuff. And he showed his living room. He's like, "This is where I practice every day. I sit here." And he's playing like, obviously they have the the the, the, the crazy simulator. He wasn't playing the Codemasters PS4, PS3, PS4 game, which is shit. Sorry, but <laughs> yeah, he's playing basically a video game mm-hmm. where there's no chance of getting hurt. Like you might have to pee, and you just press pause, go to the yeah. bathroom. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a, I know it's a different era and people are going to call me an asshole next time somebody gets a head injury. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I agree with Brundle and Lauda yeah. and Ecclestone yeah. and uh, F1. So F1 got, is not about a halo or a canopy. That's my point. Right. So I got two points uh, that I want to make. And one is about, uh, so only one person has died in the NHL. Only one person has died. Ever? Ever. 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 In the- uh, on ice or on the field. Only one person has died on the field in, uh, I just looked it up. It might it's just Google telling me. Even back uh, in the day when they played yeah. NHL with no helmet. Yeah. You even, know, those guys then, were as strong as now. Then, You're but, still shooting 100 kilometers but an hour. one of those problems shot. is that, like, obviously, lots of people suffer from concussions. And mm. that's not an immediate uh, some thing of the faces diagnose. of those old goalies. Yeah, they're all fucked up. Horrifying. But, you know, they live. Worse than Frankenstein. Sort of. But the, the second thing I wanted to, to bring up was a point about, you know, like, people make the argument about... Um, it's like, oh, if they have like this canopy over the head, I won't be able to see their face. Yeah. You can't see their face anyway. It's true. Yeah. You're retarded if yeah. you think that. <laughs> so not like actually retarded. But like, you're silly if you if you if you believe that because yeah. like any picture you look, like I have to sometimes ask you, he's like, yo, which driver is that? It's like, ah, oh, he's got this kind of helmet on, so I think it's this guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like that argument is pretty fucking moot. Like it doesn't yeah. make any sense. So to remedy that, you could obviously like stick a fucking camera in the canopy you could do that you and could. right on the dude and you'd actually be able to see it and then people are like oh what about the the live audience i mean the live audience is a fraction yeah 
of the attendants, right? Essentially, right? right? Like, sorry, the, the the people that are at the track, mm-hmm. throw the thing in there, make it futuristic, make it cool, make it cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Part part of that that I don't agree with. Something I heard Lauda say, Brundle yeah. say, a few of the other commenters say, the top guys that are talking about this. If you put on the halo, you put on the canopy, you can't see the helmet as much. Mm. Personally, I was never for the stick with the one helmet rule. I don't, I couldn't tell you what any driver's helmet looks like, and I don't identify them by that. I go by the T bar. I go, I always, always have, right. as long as I've been uh, enough of a fan to identify drivers on the track. Right. I've yeah. Been, yeah. I've exactly. been looking at that T bar. As as long as I've been a fan, that's T bars. I think pretty much been a thing as far as I can remember. This being a black or a neon T bar. What if would, um? That's what I look at. So, what if, what if cars and, were slightly more individualized to the driver? The numbers the, that came yeah. in. People were against that a few years ago, but I think it's cool. You get a number, you stick with it for your career. That's your number. Right, but and, even like even a slight differencing in uh, on a particular part of the car. Like something else. Well, they do that. They do that in in um, in NASCAR actually, uh, where like. But that's because you can't you can't see the driver. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, because you can't, yeah, see, you can't, you can't see, see the driver's heads yeah. in that. Right. But that's a different. And sport. that's still successful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot that can be done to I guess identify the driver if if this. I mean, I guess people are saying inevitably this will become because now the cat is out of the bag. What I wanted to say is that no, the cat is not out of the bag. There's still something that can be done. Like you can still push helmet technology to the vet like you just not if you're not even examining that as a, as a possible I, 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 a probability of like like how you increase safety is by move by pushing forward uh helmet technology then you're not considering all the options you're just doing this because it's probably going to be the easiest to implement and what they know like yeah. what people know yeah. like i said i don't want to distract myself now but i think this helmet tech that i saw last week is close to a revolution like this is mm-hmm. going to revolutionized head injuries it's been a huge topic in all sports the last two or three Mm -hmm. years head injuries uh comas um concussions and just head trauma in general even a a small true that's a big a small like half second knockout can change your life absolutely Uh, yeah so so uh something i want to bring up yeah it's kind of like an odd sort of perspective but has there been anything else that's happened in formula Formula One in the last like two, three, four, five years, let's just say one to five years, mm-hmm. that you've been like, oh, I can't believe they've done that. Uh, they've made some sort of rule change. And then now it's been in the system for so long that you just sort of accepted it and it's moved on. Because I'm assuming. A lot. Mo- most of them, most really, of really of to be yeah, honest. DRS, I guess, was one of the things that I wasn't necessarily a big, a big fan of. Yeah. Right. Especially at, at first, it wasn't working well because yeah. they had. the They were. Ex- they didn't know it was brand new right like Mm -hmm. and that was i don't know that was an interesting phase like they made some interesting races because sometimes some of the tracks the drs zones were too long Mm -hmm. and they just didn't know like they they worked out a formula i guess like it's within the meter like you'll see like this drs zone is 117 meters Mm -hmm. and they've calculated that's the most efficient right yeah like you should be able to get enough of an advantage to probably pass that guy but it's not guaranteed and yeah but at the start some of them were way too big and some of them were way too small so yeah that first everyone was like oh what the hell is this it's artificial and blah blah but right everyone's for it now yeah well like, or 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 at least you take it for granted you know, yeah maybe having, that too yeah, yeah. that and that almost coincided with the tall narrow back wing which are going back to the low wide one right that was looked it, we- at first. Everyone was like, "Oh, that looks really weird. That doesn't look like F one car." But right. now it does. And then going back is gonna look probably weird. Like, whoa, these cars look weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the low yeah. wide wing. But I don't know. So now, now you guys obviously the- with that example of yeah. the DRS and maybe mm-hmm. even the wing, uh, does that give you perspective on? Uh, no, this is too. New... This is too radical. Yeah, this is, this is too radical. This is, no, this is nose, one of the things. Don't forget about the cock nose. Oh yeah, those cock noses. <laughs> <laughs> and there's still there's a short cock. They, they've gotten progressively It's a, it's a little bulge. It's oh, it used to be like a little point, nub. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And with some cars, the way that they came out to the solution was basically I I like hanging that. a dildo above the front. <laughs> yeah, a couple, a couple of them there with like Gonzo <laughs> elephant schnoz in my cock, basically off the hanging off the end. So wait, why isn't it different then? 
Uh, no, don't no, because these the, the the way that the car looks, the arrow elements or whatever. Like yes, there there's some things that like uh, that are, that can be like either distracting enough or like you know they, they can be enough like they can change the sport in in a different direction enough for you to like you know be up in arms about it and whatever. Mm -hmm. But this this is to me and I, and I agree. I mean, and I know these things work better if we disagree, but <laughs> um, I agree that. Putting something like this or the Halo or any kind of things, just driving these cars like away from from just open cockpit racing, is is tampering with the the essence of F1, if you will. Right now, and and, and I actually gave this a bit of thought. Now, if what you want, going back to what we talked about before, mm -hmm. if what you want and what what's going to make the difference uh, in, in in actually F1 being the pinnacle of motorsport. Uh, whatever is, is is to be that to actually fully embrace being the pinnacle of motorsport. You know, one of the things that you can achieve that is by being the fastest or whatever. Um, does it have to be like? Does the pinnacle of motorsport have to be uh, open cockpit racing? That is maybe what it's. You could argue either way now. Like it's. Oh really? Well, no. I I I think that there could be some interesting arguments going in either direction because like. What 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 does open cockpit entail, right? Like it, right. it entails more danger, right? as as and this is what what they're pointing right. at. But, but could you not argue? Sorry, very quickly, could you not argue that the speed itself is almost that that's dangerous? Oh I yeah, care who you oh, are. Yeah. That, exactly. that speed oh, and, is speed. And, and that is that is the point. Maybe maybe right. maybe the pinnacle of motorsport has to be the most dangerous motorsport. That's this is what <laughs> that's I, a I, weird I, argument, but yeah, yeah, I can yeah. accept that. I'll reiterate. I still haven't seen a race. I know a couple of the top guys, but something that's been becoming more and more popular recently is mm. MotoGP because it's dangerous as fuck. Yeah, it's, it that's really part of it. They're, 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 they've offered they're up taking, exciting They're racing. taking open cockpit to, an, to the next level. They're yeah, opening the everything. next level. <laughs> yeah. You're sitting on a bike, man, going the same speeds. You're, the average speed is not quite, but they're reaching the same speeds. They're cornering oh, that, pretty close. That's, that's another thing. The closer you can't closer have closer. You can't have motherfuckers on two wheels going faster than F1 cars. Like that. that, yeah, that it's, that'll still, be, it's still a while to go until be, that if, the, yeah. if they'd ever converge, but the danger is so much higher and with mma pff, somebody died in in ireland about three weeks ago in mma that's no but nobody's uh, the rules of that is kicking going each back, other in the head Do the going back to moto gp though kid, knock each other in the head Let, let's talk about moto gp just for one more second here because i think that that is like yeah. pe people are saying like oh you know the safety this and that blah 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 whatever etc etc but like nobody's talking about putting a freaking glass shield or you know or or pla like Translucent plastic shield around the bias of Moto GP. You could, that is, you could, you could yeah, do that yeah, and turn it yeah. into a two wheeled car. Yeah, and race those. Yeah, but and no, add all kinds of wings to it and stuff, right? And make it like a. Nobody's nobody nobody's nobody talking wants about, that. Nobody's shit. talking about that. None of the drivers because are it like has hey. to be the purest. The and the purest is is probably like the just <laughs> every shape or at least most if it's not for safety. Every shape of this car, every every shape, every every little For wing or purpose, whatever, it's been thought about yeah. way too long to 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 extract the most speed out of every corner and out and out of every track. This this is too much. That it's that that it, it it's not doing that job. It's just See, there for safety, and it's right. too much. See, Danny Rick said after when he was asked like, "How did it feel? How did it look? Blah blah blah." And do you want this? Should we bring it in? Is this the essence of F1? He said he's one of the one he's of the uh, proponent, one of the, one of the pushers of this. He said it would be in quotes disrespectful not to test and look at bringing this in. Disrespectful to who? To whom? To yourself. So stop racing then. I'll drive it. <laughs> if I was offered the opportunity, yeah. I'd be like, yeah, like Brando said, it's. Dangerous as fuck. You step into that car, you might die. You might yeah. crash mm -hmm. it and die. Yeah. I would take that chance, man. Let me drive it. Hamilton's laughing about it. Um, Nicky Lauda. Nicky Lauda is missing an ear and half his half of his head. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, no, absolutely, he, absolutely. Rondo asked him. He's like, man, you might be the most. Uh, uh, I don't know, experienced, uh, influential person to ask that I could possibly ask about this. What do you think? 
He's like, man, this shit's safe enough. Basically, what that's what yeah. ro- what he said. Right. Yeah, Nicky Louder. Need, okay. Nicky Louder. Uh, we don't need this. So I have a a segue, which is still part of this conversation, and it's what is Formula One in your guys' eyes going to look like in twenty years, twenty <sighs> fifty years? Jesus, nobody nobody can tell you what the years. world. Right, right, right. Nobody's gonna, nobody can tell you what the world is going to look like in ten years, man. Right. right, right. If yeah, you look I at Formula that. One two years ago, nobody could have predicted that the same engines would look like this. Nobody would have ever suggested right, okay. canopy or going less back direction. to direction. Where is it going? Where is it going? What, oh, oh, no. If you assume uh, ooh, by the current ooh. sort of standards of today yeah. and how technology evolves as yeah. quickly as it does, yeah. Yeah. that you're going to see things change very, very quickly and in a very particular direction of yeah. ones of efficiency uh, and how, how they perform, how, how safe they are. There are so many factors that you can sort of be like, yeah, I can see it going like this, this and that because of this, this and this. Right. I, so there's going to be. I don't know. I can't oh, imagine. Okay, okay. Imagine we live in a world where uh, 30 years, we're we're on the moon. We're we're on practically on Mars at this point. Yeah. Right. We're thinking about a Mars GP. <laughs> right. Like I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait 30 years while we're still doing this podcast. <laughs> don't forget the moon race is happening. Moon race. We're gonna have a moon race. Who, anyone that's interested, I think you're past the date to enter now. The Google X Prize for the lunar race is the biggest prize ever offered on Earth for anything. Well, to get to the moon. No, no, not not an actual race on. Not a race. No, a race it to is. The moon. It is a race to get a vehicle to the moon, drive it 500 meters, and send back pictures and high definition pictures and video of that. That's the race. You get 10 million dollars. This is the biggest prize ever offered on Earth for anything outside of a lottery. Okay. This isn't a lottery. It's free to answer. Right. Okay. So maybe my, uh, a better way to phrase this well, is that next is, is the, the F1 race. car in maybe, well, let's say, 10 years, let's mm-hmm. be really conservative and very close. Yeah. Is it going to look like this? No. 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 Then what's it going to look like? <laughs> it's the, is, it's, is it going to be like, when I think of like a motorsport, I think of like an engine. Mm-hmm. Right. That's pretty much guaranteed. I, I right. doubt yeah. they'll, they'll yeah. go electric. Well, yeah, m- motorsport, yes, it has to have an engine. An engine. Yes. Right. Okay. But, now, is that but what is that problem? engine? What, like, what is that engine made of? What, what kind of power does it use? Right. I so think naturally you have to accept that this sport is going to evolve. Oh, yeah. It's going to, See, and it has. It has and to it, be. It has, it has and to. it will. Let yeah. me pause you there for one second, yeah. though, because this is called motorsport. Motorsport encompasses, you know, rally. Yeah. True. Uh, Formula E, whatever, anything that that has an engine. See, but there's there's a this you got to make a distinction. Does Formula E encompass motorsport? Yeah, because you it's an electric. It has a motor. Electric motor. Motor, right? But yeah, yeah, so (laughs) okay, so that's that's what I wanted to just define for a second. So that is motorsport, but it's not called engine sport. And typically, engine the def- where you how you define that is that you're burning gasoline. Not necessarily because you had the steam engine before, and That's those were the okay, engines. Okay, you could okay, you could okay. race you could you could have you could, a, you you a, could have race. a category out there with with just steam engine this is true. cars, and I would call that a motorsport. Why not? That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's and and, and things evolved from, from we're not racing steam engine cars because the 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 internal combustion gasoline engine came about and if something that is actually legitimately an option that everybody adopts and whatever there will come a time when they might uh, they could have they, they're gonna fuel, have right? to face reality they could be right? like hemp diesel or algae algae derived fuels etc 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 yeah uh, it, whatever it might be Hi- hydrogen fuel cells and and then and if that's the industry standard around the world and whatever and and everybody is is <laughs> There, there will come a point, yes, and that's 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 probably going to become the next like huge like intergenerational issue of F one is going to be like whether or not they they actually face the fact that the, the world would have probably moved away from gasoline internal combustion, and do they want to adopt that or do they want to uh, take the approach that, for example, you know people are still. Um, racing horses you know what i mean like are they, are they gonna and dogs yeah and yeah and dogs like so are they gonna Greyhound move... races are every day no but while well, these horse races still right. require like a person a, okay, a, yeah. a jockey a or whatever yeah right. a horse a, yeah a driver uh so are they gonna like are, are they gonna stick to their guns and say like you know what we're just gonna be like the, the gasoline the, the highest gasoline burning series in the world or are they gonna move on i i'd like to 
I'd like to believe that in 10 years, mm-hmm. F1 will be in a position where they will be able to like make the most rational decision to keep the sport going in a sustainable way. And that would probably mean moving with the times and facing the reality and like realizing that you have, you have to move with where you people and, and that there's going to be people that are going to be, you know, up in arms about the past and whatever, but mm-hmm. you have to face the music at one point mm-hmm. or another. I would, I would say this in five years, I would almost guarantee I'd bet anyone in five years, five years is going to be the 2020 Japanese Olympics. The Jap- the Japanese are hosting the 2020 Summer Olympics. Their goal so in four years. Their part yeah, that's in four years. So a year past that, everyone's gonna know about this. The Japanese are pushing hard to debut about 15 huge technologies that nobody's using right now that are gonna become almost a standard at the Olympics, mm. which is part of what the Olympics is like, showing off how badass your country is. Right. They want to make a big statement. They've partnered with Boeing, and in five years, 70% of all the fuel in all of the jets that will be flying all of the delegates, athletes, and anyone associated with the Olympics will be fueled by algae. Holy Going to shit. Be 70, that means hydrogen, hydrogen fuel. They're, right. they're aiming for a minimum of 70% bio de- biofuel that is grown from algae. They're That's- basically like... They're developing algae that basically eats garbage, puts and, out... And produces hydrogen. That's it, what that is. The, the algae thing is with it's, hydrogen. It's yeah. not all hydrogen. It's it's a kerosene. It's a oh, really? jet fuel. Yeah, ah. it's, it's an algae-derived kerosene-type jet fuel with jumbo jets. It's almost like basically kerosene or maybe kerosene. Mm. Yeah, after the, after uh, that jet point, fuel is kerosene. Japan is aiming... If you, you can look this up. Japan is aiming to make a big splash with that and then having those facilities spinning that out to their national airlines etc and promoting that mm. formula one make no mistake especially if honda's still there if they make the commitment yeah. uh, can stick with the commitment they <clears throat> promised yeah. honda if they can beat other people with an algae fuel that's where it's going to yeah. evolve there's no rules against it right there's al- almost almost no fuel rules in formula one as True. far as i know you can mix whatever, like the gas has been in the last two years. Well, if you, if it, has to be, data, it has to be road relevant. So it has to be like, you know, it has to be kind of close to what cars use. Yeah, but that, that's a yeah. huge bit. If that could work, that's a huge business for people yeah. to start rolling out algae farms that can grow fuel. If I can make any bet, it's that for the next decade, five years yeah. for sure. Because it's four years reasonable. that Olympic Games, that's, that's their main promotion is algae fuel, biodegradable fuel for the Jets. Formula One could go there. I really think that, that that could be my only prediction. I think I don't see any if, evolutions in aerodynamics, anything where, like that. No, where would I where would I like to see it in terms of like you know like graphene the, tires? The, the look, or something? yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> the, I, I would like to see F one embrace way more of the new materials that are that are being worked on. And if in battery ten years, tech, battery tech is gonna explode yeah. as well. There's battery been a tech, but also ma- ma- materials in, in, into like building. Yeah, adding more like graphene bits as they become available because they're lighter. Um, so I, if anything, I think that we're probably if if we're being completely honest and, and completely visionaries here, and 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 actually, obviously, like I'm, I'm also hoping that maybe at least by ten years from now they'd realize that that they've been over regulating things too much. Right. I, the, the way that I, not necessarily the way that I see things going, but the way I'd like to see it going is that these uh, f- next 10 or so years that we have ahead are going to be the last 10 or so years where cars looked completely similar. I think that we're right. going to, ha- we're going to see vast differences from team to team. Mm. Even. Oh, interesting. Some, now, this is... I'm assuming this is like a post-Bernie era. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. It would have yeah. to be. But, but but in some people's minds, Bernie's gone by the end of this year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we talked about that last week. Yeah, well, yeah, well, right. I guess maybe next week, hopefully, we can give an update on that story. Yeah, it's, well, it's been a race weekend. Uh, it sort of got buried. But I'll, 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 I'll... Yes. I'll, you know, top I'll of it? promise you about it. Speaking of material sciences, though, while we're looking at the Red Bull with the canopy on, some material sciences brought in this year, people think, is the matte paint... 
Oh yeah. The matte paint that might be an aerodynamic advantage, some sort of Wait, material isn't, science. Does the Renault have that? Yes, they do. Right, it's the Renault. And, and Williams as well. Yeah, and oh, Williams. Really? But you can't, oh, so you can't, see the you can't tell because it's white. It's white. white. Ah, they were clever about it. Right. <laughs> Even uh, the Renault as well with the bright yellow, you can't you can't see it in the same way as you can there with the blue. Especially when you compare it to their old car. Yeah. But something I think, well, the, the canopy anyways, the debate is on July 1st. Formula One has set a deadline for the decision to bring in either the canopy or the halo for July 1st of this year. Well, that's coming up. It's coming up. We have a, a short window of debate. One month. Yeah. Oh, See, two months. This is the time that we have to talk about this like we're doing yeah. right now. If if I had to choose either, I guess I'd go with the window over the halo. Yeah. But even that, like some something Brando. No, well, brought there's up. there's questions to be answered. Is it gonna have a a, a windscreen wiper? Is it gonna have like what? Yeah, how what do you, you do at do nighttime? You know, what Brando yeah. said at night. Say if you're running glare? a night race. Oh man, with the glare on top of rain. Yeah, rain or rain or nighttime yeah. or rain at night. How the fuck do you see out of that, man? Yeah. You gotta yeah. put your wipers on in your yeah. car. You have to pull over on the car. Yeah. You can't drive without windshield wipers. Or you yeah, but is it really that safe while it's rain, raining and dark? When was the last time that's happened? It hasn't happened yeah. yet. That, that that we've had a wet night race. Night race. I don't know. Yeah, there was a threat. The, I think remember we talked about last year the yeah. the uh, the night race the the. Um, but we, but the there's, Singapore, there's been the dead race. soaked races and there's been night races, right. so that's a night a wet night race is not out of the possibilities. And we, we talked just before the podcast today, mm. Moscow for May Day for the May Day celebration spent mm. one point three six million dollars on cloud seating. So that to that nice wouldn't rain. Weather. But we talked about this last year for the Singapore Grand Prix. They seed the they clouds. They seeded clouds around <laughs> the no, city. They, they do that every year yeah. for the Singapore Grand Prix. So that it rains around the city, but not in it. Yeah, so wow. they, they take For some the jumbo Prix. jets, fill the gas tank with some sodium iodide or whatever, and they spray it through the turbine and spray that around the atmosphere. And that combines with the water, makes it extra heavy, and the shit falls. It rains, clears the clouds. It happens. That happens. This is fucked. <laughs> this is fucked. <laughs> so, in a sense, so, so, in a sense, they're still engineering races, even. Like they're like, oh, it might rain, it might not rain. Uh, but no. in this case, no, oh, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna rain. Yeah, I think changed it. I think that cloud seeding is totally outside of F one though. That is the probably the federal government saying we're gonna be our entire city is gonna be on TV for two days at night with the lights on, looking right. badass. It cannot rain, and then they force it to rain around the city. They make sure it doesn't rain. They just pay that money. We pay whatever it takes them like a right. six weeks to set up and take down that right, track. Right, right. Yeah, I don't know. Crazy. That's the that still seems fishy to me. It is. So, it, it, it honestly it's still is artificial. Yeah, it is, that is artificial. And something. Remember in qualifying, uh, like how good would it be to not to have? Not, now that you mentioned it, and and I, uh, we were talking about this uh, last Singapore Grand Prix when we when we were doing the podcast. Is that how good would it have actually? Like, would it be actually to have a night? race in the rain that was sweet like that, that, would, that would super dangerous. that would that would really separate like that would yeah. like who's yeah. got the balls to do yeah. this <laughs> right yeah, sure. who can find the it's grip a, in i here? think that example hmm. right there uh is uh is, is one that showcases like really great talent oh yeah right. oh yeah and yeah, that's yeah. what we want and i feel like that right there that's the pinnacle of motorsports mm -hmm. right we're like the 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 men Ma man and machine man battling it like exactly. to the limit bring right. it to the limit and like none of this none of this saving tires conserving shit to the limit right right to the whatever limit. sport it is you want to see the best of the best that's why people watch the nba yeah. the nhl the yeah. nfl f1 blah 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 whatever sport you want you want to see the best of the best yeah. in in the harshest conditions yeah. yes i mean more so it's different with f1 in motorsports in general because they're in a different place every time, right? right? You're not playing on the same rink or the same field every time. Uh, and tracks, the harshest tracks look different. Do you, do you right. trust the earth to provide the conditions? Right. Yeah. Right? And that's, yeah. That, yeah you just that's, show up and you answer. fucking race until <laughs> it's over. Yeah. You reach 305 kilometers first, then right. you win. That's that's the rules. I don't know. The second last thing I have to say about this canopy is the mirror just sort of related in qualifying it was kind of interesting danny rick tried out this thing i don't know if you saw the, the first round of qualifying or if you saw it when they tested this canopy they took it off it was sort of like 
it was sort of like it seemed like it was half ass like it was kind of clipped but it wasn't it wasn't designed like you see it had like two lips on the front that sort of clipped onto the front of the chassis right like it was built to not fly off and embarrass oh, yeah. them but it wasn't 100 <laughs> percent either it looks pretty good but during qualifying Danny Rick's right side rear view mirror flew off. It flew off. Do you see that? It fucked up his no. time. You saw that? No. You didn't watch Qualcomm? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. His, 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 his side mirror yeah, was his, like... His, and then it went right up. right rear view mirror yeah. broke off on his hot lap for qualifying. And then it was just like flipping around like this on the side while he's trying to do his lap. And he tried to break it off. It didn't. And then it broke off itself. But it distracted him enough. He didn't get into the top 10 on Q2. Uh, probably caused by this canopy test somehow the mirror broke off the last thing i gotta say about it july 1st is a deadline to decide the canopy the right. halo personally i don't care which one like if they're gonna pick one like i said i don't want to be the guy or one of those guys that was like harping against it and then somebody gets hit and dies but i don't believe in it either i don't think it right. should be brought in I'm going to say I think it should be optional. Let them vote. Mm. You can oh, use, that's great. You can yeah, use one fantastic. or the other. Try to design it or implement it to your best aerodynamic advantage or don't. Right. Yeah. Because they could only run this canopy on a single slow lap because the cooling, it was affecting the cooling into the main right. yeah, air you, intake. You can kind of see it, right? The intake above the driver's head is where you get the air that the engine breathes. So just by basically just by adding that, this whole section of the car would have to be different. Totally different. So yeah. that means that all of like the the, the, the wing would have to be slightly different. Would, yeah, they, yeah. They would just so like say like you're you own a team, you hire a dri you have a driver on your team like Ricardo, like Button, like Alonso, like the the handful of other guys who are have kids and don't want to die <laughs> racing. And they want this halo. They want a windshield in their face or whatever. Okay, I'm let just, them throw it on. I'm and just gonna throw this the out. Guys there. that don't like uh, Hamilton, let them ride with the open and fucking. This is what badass. I want. No, this is. What I, I don't want that. I want this. I don't like the closed wheels. I don't like. We've had some of these. Uh, things sorry, things. I just like the idea of the car. Like it's in a direction that, of the future. But the, that, that's just... that, that looks like a fast ass car. I, I, I'll right. give you this that. This is that from looks... PlayStation though. This uh, this was designed by Adrian Newey. This was designed by Adrian Newey right, right, right. for uh, Polyphony. Totally... Polyphony Digital put out this I car. I totally understand that. Oh, I... Is this, is this the Grand Turismo? Yeah, this was made for, this car was made digital only with a, um, I don't know how you'd say it. Uh, it's virtual, like a, a simulated fan car. Like see how the, the floor to the right, right, yeah, right there. See, that's kind of rounded. Yeah, right where your mouse Sorry, is. Guys. So that's kind of rounded. They put a virtual, as if the car would have a fan to suck, to have super downforce, like a yeah. super floor effect. Yeah. But Polyphony Digital, who makes Gran Turismo for PlayStation, hired Adrian Newey from Red Bull to make a yeah. Red Bull. This, they they this called one. this the RBX, I think it was called. Yeah. X 2014 or whatever, yeah. Yeah, so the X 2014, 15, 16, they did a couple of them now. So in like 10, 15, 20 years, this is what I expect. Maybe. This is this is what Adrian This might be Neely the convergence of Formula like E it. or the Robo Race might come out to. Right. But that's not what Formula E, though. That's not what Formula, Formula 1, one is. With I, I get that. And I, it, just my opinion, as someone who's just gone to the sport, yeah. I don't think it's going to survive if it doesn't adapt. To something hey and that and that's and that's perfectly valid like hey maybe, I'm, maybe i don't say I'm, maybe, I'm not saying I'm maybe, right. hey, maybe i'm wrong yeah, yeah i'm not saying maybe i'm, I'm right either. maybe i'm like one of those old people like all up and i was being like eh, yeah you know my santa no it's a <laughs> it's it's if it's eventually gotta be those the people will just no longer be watching formula yeah, one because yeah. they won't, won't exist be able to. yeah uh anymore yeah. and new people will have to take on the sport and if you don't um, if you don't care for those young yeah. younglings, young younglings, as <laughs> as it were, uh, then you won't have a sport to be supported. Yeah, oh yeah, right. Then it, it'll just they won't exist. If this is what it has to be, eventually, I I I think that eventually, eventually Formula One, or I hope that eventually Formula One is in a position that they can make the right decisions to move the sport in this direction. If that's what has to be, if it has to be something like this it could still be a regular motor no no i know i know i know but yeah if <laughs> if it has to be this with with uh, engine that somehow like make uh, it consumes kelp oil 
then, <laughs> then, then, yeah. then that's what it has to be. But honestly, I think that what the, the real change that I'd like to see more than in any of these regulations or or how the car moves or whatever mm. is, or yeah, or, or you know how, how the car looks or the aesthetics of the car or what's powering the car. The real change that I'd like to see is in the decision making process in it, right. equipping <laughs> F1 with the tools necessary to make the changes that are needed fast enough and and in the right direction right yeah See, absolutely we no, definitely no, I, don't need headlights <laughs> yeah no, no. no like, like, that, that, that would be like a for yeah this yeah. is clearly very silly and um <laughs> Okay, so one last point before we... Sure, sure, sure. And, and it's just like, when I was a kid, I, mm -hmm. one of my first video games was on PC, and it was a Formula One game. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, these cars, like, obviously the graphics were shit compared to now. Yeah. But I was like, oh my god, these things look like, they look like they're from the future. Right. Like, they are the next concept of car. Right. When I look at a Formula One car now, I just look, I just see... Uh, the shadow of the past. Let's, right, let's put it yeah. that. They're like, we love this idea about Formula One. It was so great. Yeah. But at the time when Formula One was great, like in the, well, yeah. to, to me, it was like the 90s, right? Yeah, or like they the did 80s. look really futuristic. They, they looked like they were the next idea for, for street cars or yeah. for anything like that. But now it just looks like they're trying to they're, they're, they're the pay same. An homage right, yeah. to, to that, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It's just not what I would want to look for. And I want to see I want to see space races. Oh yeah, right. And and, and 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 everybody at the end of the day, like motorsport is kind of like it's 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 still like it does. There's something about cars racing and 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 at these speeds and the ridiculousness <clears throat> of the noise and whatever mm -hmm. that really just brings up like your inner eight year old, right? Yeah, like, absolutely. And, and dude, you saw me at, at the Canadian Grand Prix. Yeah, I yeah. lost my mind. Yeah, exactly. I didn't care what they looked like. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, these things are flying. Yeah, yeah. Like, they were, they were being launched through gravity, <laughs> right? Absolutely. And and as as long as F one has the capacity to bring those kind of emotions out, I think that what yes, whatever that's a great point. What whatever ends up happening, but if it's if it's still that, if it's still just really exciting, yeah. your inner yeah, child, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's I think it's going in the right direction, or it will be going in the right direction if if it matters to that. I think the head protection has to be optional. Yeah, I, I, that's yeah, my, that's yeah. My that is something that I could agree with, but that would make the aerodynamics <laughs> crazy. Yeah, so let mm. it let it be. Let, if it poses an advantage then other drivers have to be like oh, i guess it's better we need to use it we put true. that thing in front of it's, my face it's, it's or true, if yeah. it's not then if the halo is like, faster well, fuck that guy he's scared i'm it, gonna beat him yeah it's true nobody is calling for this none of us no fans ever yeah. said let's wrap the driver's head in foam and a styrofoam or put a, a shield around him or a windshield right. nobody's calling for that nobody's calling for it in football or rugby or soccer or fighting those sports have gotten more violent, if anything, as, <laughs> yeah, as people true. have evolved in the yeah. last two decades uh, with performance enhancers, and just general violence, openness of the internet, of learning how to fight, all, yeah, yeah, all that stuff, how to crush your enemy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm against it. <laughs> but even if you, you give that option and say that it is advantageous yeah. to have it, that forces... That that commitment to to like the choice of it yeah. actually uh, encourages the evolution. Oh, yeah. of the sport, which yeah. is still yeah. kind of cool, right? Oh, yeah. Like, oh well, it does kind of it is a bit advantageous to have this aerodynamic. If if it if it, if it, if, it if it turns out to be, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, I say bring it in, whatever. Like I'm not gonna stop watching. I don't think it's gonna it, happen because it way. exists. No, it will. You think well, so? The, 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 yes, yeah, man. some sort of some yeah maybe Jensen Button Ricardo. It's gonna be it's it, gonna Alonso. be closer to that. Yeah, it, it, like that in some way, shape, or form is probably gonna get uh, implemented. That's base. It's that's and and F one will then miss another opportunity to develop something great that they could. But they it's either have. that or the Halo or that, which basically is the Halo, but without the glass. Do without the glass. One of the two. He's gonna have the two side supports in line of the mirrors, so you can say it's out of the driver's way or the center, probably without the glass because it it makes a lot of problems. But something's gonna happen for sure. Mm. Too many guys have complained. That's too far along. Yeah. Hello. Uh, be before I guess before we wrap it up, I just wanna I just wanna end in 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 in, in, in something that I kind of want. I, <laughs> 
I think that we should get behind and I want to I kind of want to start, you know, in a way. I kind of want want us to start this. And you want to kickstart it? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's just funny. Um it it uh my birthday is coming up. Right. Uh <laughs> this weekend and it, you know, on top of the normal birthday things and birthday feels, and thinking about your mortality. Oh you yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta, you gotta put gotta, a canopy yeah. in your life. It really reminds you of you know your own mortality and all that kind, of, all those kinds of things. But then, <laughs> then it made me think. You know, like back in the day, back in like Roman times, um, people, even though there there was a, um, like a, an official way to like keep track of the year and uh, as a number uh, mm -hmm. as in like there were they, they didn't have like the you know the, 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 we're, we're in 2016 now they didn't have that same number cell system. phones well <laughs> no, no, they're right they, they, they have didn't. cell phones no, back they, then? no they didn't oh. <laughs> but uh, in, instead of having like this numbering system for the years that we that we have now they had uh, a numbering system for the from the years like when since the city got um uh, got funded uh, f founded but no, none of the people that lived in Rome, none of the normal Romans use that system. They, they wouldn't tell you like, oh, I was born in like the year 200 and something. Mm -hmm. They they preferred like and everybody knew this. Uh, they, they, they they talked about years, years in general um, as. When, who was the, the, the Roman like who were the Roman consuls at the time? At the time. So so oh, oh yeah. so I lived like so. So, oh, remember like. Remember, remember, like you know, ten years ago in the year of Plinius and, and Maximus, yeah, yeah. or like, oh, when were you born? Oh, I, you know, I, I was born in the in the year of like, uh, you know, Constantine and whoever, right? Right. I propose to bring back to bring <laughs> to bring this system where by F one fans can identify each other if they refer to their own birth year as <laughs> the year of the champions. So for ex for instance, you were born in the first year of Prost. Danny and I are from the second year of Prost. My little <laughs> my little nephews, e each one of them, they they <laughs> they were born in um in the fourth year of Vettel and the and the th the second year of of Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually kind of brilliant. I, I, it's I, super adorable. I am from the second year of Prost. You know what I mean? I, went, I thought I, you were going to go with like a Bernie. No, 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 no. No, uh, <laughs> no way. Who, who was your champion? Uh, yeah, we, we're all... Our, our, our year champion is Prost. We, we are, oh, we are kids nice. of the Prost era. <laughs> Yeah, how, how you know? And so instead of um, instead of talking about millennials or whatever, or like, yeah, yeah. or you know, like these th this new generation, like you, 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 instead X of instead y of berating, yeah, instead of berating them like that, you can just be like, yo, anybody, anybody that was born in the in the Schumacher years, uh -huh. yeah, they don't even know, they don't even know what's going on, <laughs> they don't even know about good cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> you can play us out. All right, guys. It's we will week. see you next week with more awesome banter. Hashtag and no halo. <laughs> <laughs> no halo. And if uh, the people on YouTube have been watching, I have now my entire um, mixing board on my phone. It's brilliant. All right. See you guys.